And now we're locked in, in the spaceship. You got that? You can hear me? Fancy. Yeah. It just locks you into the conversation much better. Dude, it does. I need these all day. Like, I feel like a guy like Christian needs these to focus because he's a guy that just scatters all over. These... (laughs) No, not going to be enough. No. Man, I guess I wanted to start... One, thank you. No problems. Number two... Gee, my voice is croaky as hell today. All that drinking, son. Shit. All that drinking. Now... Anyway, I wanted to start with gassing you up a little bit no. because you're not a guy who's on social media. People don't really know you. Uh, some people saw my Snapchats last night. Ah, so you got to be on the exclusive Snapchat to see that. Nah, nah, fuck. Social media sucks. Right. So people don't know you. They don't know your expertise. They don't know you, your thoughts mainly on, on a lot of the things mm. in this world that you have strong beliefs on. Now, I think you and I think the people around you would consider you as one of the most thought-provoking thinkers and yeah thought-provoking thinker and one of the best s and c strength and conditioning professionals in this country like top one percent no dude you don't think i know you don't think that no but i i I think that if you ask the people around you absolutely bro that's because the people around me haven't been exposed what's out there dude in australia i don't mean i don't mean america no america's different beast but bro I know you're not going to gas yourself up no. and, and stand on that pedestal. No, no, I'm not in the top 1%. What would, where would you no. go? Who, Shit. 1% in, 1% in Australia, it's not even that much of a totality of people. I can't run the numbers on that. No. But there's, I'll we, do it we, for you. We, we have some good coaches out there. We do. And you're one of them, man. Appreciate it. 10 Thank years you. in, um, and you've affected a lot of people and influenced. You're probably one of the biggest influencers on, on my, not just career, but like as an individual as well. Thank you. Appreciate it's changing it. the way I think about things and challenging. So let's get to day one because you've been in this industry like 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gone quick. How did you get here? I don't think, I don't even know. Like what got you into all this mess? Like strength and conditioning, health, fitness, um, wellness. Mix of things, dude. Take us back. Um, 19 year old Jay Ellis. We'll probably have to go back before that actually. Okay, um, let's do it. Early on plans were to be a doctor. Mm. Um, Dr. Ellis Yeah Oh sorry Prior to that like I, was, I wanted to be a marine biologist When I was mega young George Costanza style Yeah right <laughs> um, I want to be a doctor And then as I got older I sort of wanted to look into physio hmm. um, <clears throat> I didn't get the marks uh, For physio um, Wasn't really all that close I enjoyed Year 12 too much I oh, Just um, like last night huh Yeah uh, <laughs> No nah, man Like I, I enjoyed school I, I really did Yeah um, so I enjoyed every part of it. I enjoyed school sport, uh, the social part of it. Um, like my best shit. I've had my best mates in my life since pro kindergarten. So like I, I grew up with roughly the same eight to 10 guys. We went through kindergarten, primary school, high school. Um, and we're still mates today. So like I've had those guys in my life a long time and school was just a joy, man. It was, it was unreal. Um, but yeah, as I got towards the end of year 12, I sort of wanted to do physio about wasn't sure um and then i knew i wasn't gonna get the marks for it because i wasn't really applying myself enough um mum being a teacher was not on you about, about that, that. she yeah. was on me about it, man she's still on me about it but what well, she's still uh, masters ain't enough no nah, come on dude, ma- the masters is junk anyway but um shout out to all the people with masters out there you got some junk yeah you guys got you guys got like, taken for a ride <laughs> um but yeah so my first placement in uh uni I think was really early on. I think it was maybe middle of first year. So this is middle, I graduated 2007 in high school. This would have been middle 2008. My first uh, first placement was at a physio clinic. Um, and I did that because my intentions were to do really well in uni then transfer. Um, I did one day and was really grateful I didn't get into physio because um, I'm the sort of guy I can't start things and not finish it. So I would have finished mm. if I got into physio, I would have finished it not liking it. I wouldn't have withdrawn. That's just who I am. Um, and I'm really glad I didn't because it sort of opened my eyes what what else was out there. Um, so then I started to sort of apply myself more directly to my sports science course with the intention to see where it could take me. Um, and then it just sort of flowed on from there that I had some opportunities open up. Um, and yeah, just one thing led to another, and it's been sort of shit. 10 or 11 years since then so um it was good like i actually think that the placement gave me a chance to figure out what i not necessarily what i wanted to do but what i didn't want to do and that yeah. was just helpful for me is eliminating things so um 
Yeah. But what sparked that? Like, what sparked that interest in the human body, in performance, um, in health? I mean, I've had a, I've had a pretty big interest in, in the human body uh, since I was young. So I've spoken to a lot of people about this. Um, some people find it pretty confronting, but um, it's my reality. So I, I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's right. Um, that was quite aggressive when I was five. Um, and I knew I was in a pretty bad way. Like I was way... I was a pretty um, intelligent five-year-old. Like I knew what was going on. I remember it to this day. Um, and I knew what my body was going through. Not necessarily the um, specifics as such, but I knew what was going on. Um, so I had a lot of health issues. I was always sort of mindful of my health. I mean, I spent a lot of my childhood in hospital. Um, went through chemotherapy and um, very fortunate went into remission pretty quickly. That's intense. Five years old to go through chemotherapy. Uh, yeah, I mean, but it was probably more intense for my family, dude. Like, yeah. I mean, you don't really have a choice. Yeah. Um, I think the impact it probably had on my, uh, I know it had a pretty big impact on my pop, um, and my mum and dad, my brother and sister, like they had to, you know, get less time devoted to them cause I was sick. Uh, and yeah, so I, I sort of knew a lot about the body from a young age and was always sort of asking questions when I got blood tests done and, um, get my lymph nodes palpated and all that sort of stuff. I was always asking questions like, what's that? What's that? Like, how does this work? Mm. What do I need to get? Um, what should my scores be for my white blood cell count, my platelets, all that sort of stuff. So, um, it sparked it pretty early on and I always sort of enjoyed sport. So as, um, as I got older, sport, um, played a big part of my life, big part of my social circles, um, I loved it mentally because like I was a not a talented footballer. I was an aggressive footballer, but not a talented one. Um, and I just, I loved it as an outlet. So uh, I played everything from uh, golf. I tried tennis, tried basketball, uh, did life saving for eight years, uh, cricket, all of it, surfing, like the whole thing. So um, I always loved sport and I knew a lot about my body. And as those things sort of came together, um, that's why I originally wanted to be on the physio to do a lot of treatment stuff because originally I wanted to be an oncologist. Um, knew I was not going to be an oncologist. I knew that pretty early on. Um, uh, so I wanted to get into physio. Uh, then I decided I didn't want to do physio and then it sort of led me down the path of um, sports performance, which um, pretty different to health. I've had this discussion, I think, with you previously, like health and performance are not necessarily um, as linked as people say. Um, yeah, they can be diametrically opposed oftentimes as well. Yeah, yep. Um, that's very well articulated. So you, you obviously had a good night's sleep. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> um, but no, that's right. So like, um, it's not necessarily like, uh, I have work with people with a variety of goals, but um, I really enjoy optimizing what you can get out of the body as opposed to purely focusing on health. So I think for me, that's what sort of led me into the sports performance path. And that's a, that brings up a, like such an important conversation. I always, and I've tried to really research this as well as possible. Like how do we optimize performance? but also longevity, health, mitigating disease, and optimizing other factors that are gonna reduce inflammation and improve wellness. How do you think about that conversation? Because when you use tools like fasting, certain supplementation, it can have counterintuitive effects to performance. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, probably something that you need to speak to someone smarter than me about <laughs> <laughs> is, is the reality. Um, look, it, Everybody will respond to things differently. I think what we've sort of fallen in the trap of thinking is like, we look at what we want to be or we think about what we want to be. Um, we have a vision in our head for how we want to live. Um, and then we're bombarded by shit that doesn't, am I too far away from this? Oh, that's, oh yeah, that's better. Um, yeah, so like, I be think- Be comfortable, get comfortable, no, 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 I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Um, yeah, I feel like we're uh, bombarded with like images of what we're supposed to look like or what we aspire to look like and I think those two things get crossed over like what, what we want to look like is probably come from what, what we get told we should look like and that's not necessarily the healthiest thing like you know um, power lifters you know there's certain parts of that that are unhealthy like probably from the time you take it up you're not healthy like you're putting your body through um, you know an excessive calorie count um, weight gain weight cut um, you know, a lot of stress that uh, weight training actually imposes on the body. Bodybuilding, man, that's not healthy. And yet we put that on like, when we look at what's healthy, we go, you know, uh, low body fat percentage, tan, muscles, you know, all the rest, or like, you know, the ratios that they sort of aspire for and um, not disrespecting either um, modality of training, but they're just, 
you know, you have to sacrifice um, health in order to optimize your performance for that. So, um, you know, the carb intake, the protein intake, that's just the general calories. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and I think that's where it sort of gets a bit confusing. So for me, um, I mean, from the time you play sport when you're young, you're never really healthy ever again. You always have like lingering injuries that sort of um, stick around. But I think the the pros and cons of exercise are far heavily weighted towards the pros and the cons. Mm, um, absolutely. But that's not to say that it's always healthy. You know, marathons are not necessarily healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, ultra Ironman is not necessarily healthy. Uh, but fantastic things to achieve. And, you know, I, if I had the discipline, I'd probably train for myself, but I just don't. And I don't aspire to do, to do Have that. Have you ever so. done something like that? Nah, I started training for a Gatorade triathlon series years ago. Um, then I hurt myself playing footy, um, had a few concussion issues and then just sort of got sick of it. So um, I, I trained for a little bit of that when I was doing my life saving, like just my own training. I'd go for runs, go for swims, go for board paddles, but um, nah, never, never seriously. Have you heard of the Moab 200? I feel like I have. If you want to talk about endurance race of endurance races, this is a 238 mile run ultra marathon run We're talking the, the the is that the one in colorado oh. there's one in colorado I read, a, I read a book about it. it's called born to run maybe i'm looking it's it up. a crazy altitude yeah it, it goes up and down like it's a two like this uh, woman courtney delwater two days nine hours yeah i think that i think that might be the one i read about it's that's bonkers man Do, is it i think it, yeah i feel like it's in denver or somewhere yes prob i gotta look it up as i'm looking it up um but like there's a great book about that, dude. I'll, I'll bring it for you to read it. Oops. Have you heard? Have you heard of a guy like David Goggins? Yep. You would have heard about him. Yep. Yeah, and you, I'm sure you would have met some people like that who have that type of mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what create? What creates that? Like, what? How much of that is nurture versus um, I nature? Know, I have no idea, dude. Again, like that stuff. And this is what I was saying. There's, there's people out there who have the answers to those questions. I don't have them. Um, I like to think about them, but I don't have the answers. But, um. There's also like this really weird, like I know a lot of really successful people and everyone sort of goes, oh, you need balance in your life, you need balance in your life and blah, blah, blah. But I know a lot of successful people with no balance, like it's single focus, like that's the goal, they'll get there regardless yeah. and that takes away from other parts of your life. And I sort of, again, like I feel like, you know, people are preaching about balance on social media and find out, you know, how to balance your life up and this sort of stuff. And that same token, they're saying, oh, like, you know, pursue your goals relentlessly. My, those two things aren't necessarily yes. the same like you know you need yeah. to make a decision that um for example like you know um I, I joke about it but i'd love to do it i'd love to uh play on the seniors golf tour when i'm 55 so i need to get my i need to be do professional it. before then but so this is the thing like for me to do that i would have to dedicate a lot more time to that which takes time away from something else which means i lose the balance in my life so it's like for me what's more important like and for some people it's just like they'll just go i'll put all that stuff aside to pursue whatever the goal may be. Um, I don't really want to do that. Like I, I live a very interesting life um, and I, I enjoy it. This, I don't think it's supposed to be balanced, especially like when you're young, like 20s, young 30s. Like I don't think this shit is supposed to be balanced. Like if you have extreme uh, goals and you want excellence, you got to do some shit that's going to be really unbalanced and aggressive. Yeah, but there's also, there's also like, you know, um, I guess the connotation that that's career-based I've got some mates that are the happiest people that I've got one of my real good mates lives in Canada and has been working a variety of jobs, um, traveling, you know, he's been there, done that. And he and I talk all the time. He's like, Oh yeah, just pack up and come over here. I'm like, I, what drives me isn't what drives you. Mm. Um, and I don't know where that gets lost as a, I, I don't know why people feel the need to have aspirations to match other people's aspirations like mine are very very individual um as probably yours are too mm. as probably people watching this are the same so um i don't drive any of my motivation like all my stuff is intrinsically motivated and that's why like i said this to you before i don't watch gary v videos and get hyped up about it i don't watch fucking david goggins yelling at a camera and be like oh yeah i want to live like that like if you do if you are motivated by that but like good luck to you but man shit motivation is fleeting right 
you want to find a constant spark and source inside of you to keep you going. What's that for you? You said intrinsic. You have yeah, your own well, intrinsic. Shit. Well, that, that's a discipline. Yeah. So motivation will obviously start the process, but discipline will um, keep it going. Yeah, ex exactly right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, that's the Hennessy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, like, I don't know. Like, I'm just not motivated by, or honestly, like it's in a weird way. I'm not even really inspired by what other people do. Like very underwhelmingly so. Like I'm not saying that categorically nobody's ever inspired me because I have been inspired before, but I don't I don't log onto my phone or, um, yeah, you know, like look at Twitter or stuff and just be like, oh, like that's incredible. So where do you get your fuel to go? Because everyone has their own fuel source, right? What's where does yours um, come from? I don't know. I don't. Know. It's probably just a something that um, I don't know whether it innate's the right word. Um, I don't know whether it's a subconscious thing, but. Um, I know where I want to get to um, and it's just like my ideal life. Like I know what I want to look like, but I'm not. You feel like you're starting to live that now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, pretty, pretty close to it. Yeah. Um, but I'm also like, you know, the whole, the whole gratitude thing, like, you know, I feel like that's tokenism too. Like you can, you can be you grateful mean? for the life you have without sitting there and writing it down all day. And if you, if you want to do that, I'm not. Well, it's a tool, right? Not, oh, dude, I'm, I'm not, not, dismi not dismissing it at all, but like, um, I feel it's much more of like a a practice and a mindset than just like a an action. Like I don't think it's something that you sit there and write down and say, I am grateful for this, da 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 da. Um, like for me, it's much more, you can choose to be grateful for what you got. I mean, shit, I, sh I probably should be dead. <laughs> so like I, like I joke about it, right. but um, I mean, my life's pretty good, man. Like shit, nothing out, nothing out there is... Um, I don't carry a lot of stress. Like I spoke this about, about this before. Like I'm not really high, not really low. I'm just but so, is what it is. It's crazy how so many people live on these constant highs and lows. Yeah, yeah. Like they are a like they're a um, pinball. Like I dude, I, I have stress, um, but I feel like I manage it pretty well. Like I'm very very rarely just mega down the dumps, and I'm very very rarely like elated with anything. Like right. It's just I feel similar. Um, and maybe I need to allow myself to be more. Um, wavering in that but I don't know. it's just it's just not it's just not who i am there's there's a lot of people who are driven by emotion and who let themselves be taken to those huge points of highs and lows yep and so it's like you're almost like uh you're at the whims of inertia right yeah yeah, yeah. and you're not allowing yourself to stay controlled within a like a, this focused window yep yep uh i mean shit we work with one yes <laughs> uh yeah, man, look, whatever, whatever works. I just think, like, everyone's um, everyone's an individual, and if that's what gets you through, like, you know, and some of those people, like we spoke about before, some of those people are very successful. Maybe if I was more highly emotive, my life would look different. I don't necessarily think it'd be better, but it'd be sure different. Right. Um, so, yeah. And now, you said before that you should be dead, and you joke about that, but, like, what, <laughs> what, was, the, what was the chances of that? Like, do you, uh, what do you remember from that? You said you remembered. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember nothing from when I was a kid. Yeah, that's the thing, man. Like some of those stuff, like a scorched stuff in your memory. Like, I think you'd have a lot of memories from when you were five. It's just they were yes, somewhere in there. Yeah, they were just. Very, I'm, I'm sure for most people, they're probably very. Um, what's the word? Repressed. Oh, just unimpressive just very sort of like, run of the mill stuff you go yeah, to school mundane. you go to kindergarten you play in the park yeah. you might have like a favorite birthday that you remember when you went to the wave pool or whatever it is but um yeah mine was a little bit different like they were very sort of serious uh times do you remember chemo yep yep what do you remember from that uh shit man uh i remember waking up one day and like my hair was just in clumps on the pillow um shit. i remember getting a lumbar puncture which people were just like you don't remember that i'm like well i can tell you what color the paint on the walls was and like what the sign on the door said and like i remember the whole day but uh, i was supposed to be um, i don't know whether i was supposed to be um under anesthetic or what but i mean i sure as shit remember it and uh yeah i remember like getting giant needles jammed in my spine and anybody's, anybody who's had a lumbar puncture will tell you like it's a pretty how is painful that, experience how different is that from like an epidural when a woman's pregnant <sighs> couldn't tell you i okay, don't know so I've not about epidurals well you, have, you haven't been pregnant before sure <laughs> not that i know <laughs> what is a lumbar puncture then um, it's basically just a giant needle jammed into your spine to, um, I think they draw marrow out of it or they test the bone marrow or okay. something along those lines. Yeah. But, um, as you can imagine a giant needle, uh, going into your lumbar spine, it need, you can imagine the size of the needle. 
Um, and yeah, you basically just curl over in a ball, I guess what you'd call um, a child's pose, a yoga position. position yeah. Yep. And expose the lumbar spine and bang. Uh, so I remember that. Uh, I remember when I walked out of the hospital, um, I didn't have the energy to climb stairs. So I was that weak. Um, I was in remission, luckily, um, but I was that weak I couldn't climb steps. So like, funnily enough, um, I sort of, I don't know whether I repressed that or just what happened, but I remember mum and dad were display home shopping when uh, we're knocking down the family home rebuilding. And I was like, I don't want stairs in the house. Like, I don't want stairs, um, which I think suited dad. Mum wanted two stories, but um, yeah, I just refused to walk upstairs, just flat out refused. Because like, it was too painful? Oh, no, don't. That's the thing. Like, I don't, at the time, I don't really know why. I just hated stairs <laughs> Damn. and then you made an association or something well yeah I, I, I did and then i thought about it and i thought back and um i think i was having a conversation with mum and we we're talking about the fact i couldn't walk up steps and we just sort of put two and two together did a Freudian analysis of myself oh, yes. and just said oh yeah that must be why but um i remember that but i never really attributed it to much but i, I was weak dude like um i remember having to get like, i had a catheter in for a long time that i've still got a scar from from five five six years old yeah Damn. yeah yeah because the, the, so the catheter had to do obviously a lot of um, you know, cathetery things. <laughs> but um, I got bathed in a Bunnings crate, like a big plastic crate from Bunnings. So I had to get, and I couldn't get my catheter wet. So I, my parents to bathe me would have to wrap me in Glad wrap, like literally just wrap me in Glad wrap, uh, or duct tape the top of it, um, and then bathe me. So I, I'm a lot of a dude. And like, shit, like I sound like I'm going talking about me, but there's people out there with worse shit than that. Yeah. Um, I had great people get me through it. Um, it took a big toll on my family so like i'm i'm really i never forget that like dude like i had i just had to sit there and get cop the treatment um mum and dad had to share school pickups uh my pop had to do a lot of babysitting um you know all the driving in and out of hospital so we lived in aspendale um the royal children's is in sort of north melbourne so um logistically man great and then like to forget the logistics of obviously the emotions of my parents going through mm. of, you know not knowing if i was going to get through it and all that sort of stuff so there, there's a lot of there's a lot of parts of that where i'm just like that's why i don't know maybe that's why i don't carry stress i'm like shit you know and then the crazy state is like one in three people have cancer in their life and yet when i talk about is it is that people, really it yeah holy shit yeah. yeah that's worldwide or just australia yeah uh no i think it's worldwide holy shit yeah, I'm pretty sure that's unsourced. Even look, that's, even, uh, that's, that's, that's an unsourced fact, but I'm pretty sure look, it's, it's something. We'll do some fact checking right here. Yeah, but um, I don't know, man. Look. It's sort of like a weird taboo topic, but I'm like, I, I just sort of always, because you know, I said before, I've had a, uh, I've had my closest mates around from all my life, so like for them, like nothing's new, um, and I sort of forget to filter things that may be confronting to other people because everyone around me knows my life growing up, um, which was great, by the way. I don't have, I had a fucking awesome childhood. I had a great childhood. It's just that I had some health issues that I had to uh, uh, work through. Um, some of them still working through, but yeah. As we do. Shit, man. Like, my life's pretty chill. My life's actually really good. And I had, a, like I said, I had a great childhood. I don't want anyone to think that I had this long, drawn out, you know, whole childhood in hospital. It wasn't that case at all. I had a very um, aggressive chemotherapy. Um, I went to remission a lot earlier than a lot of people do. Uh, like, some people get chemo for years. Um, and yeah, and then from then on, I was just basically off to Auskick, uh, off to school, back to school, um, playing Milo league cricket. Within a year? Uh, probably a couple of years after I started, I started Auskick and stuff a little bit after, but I was back at school and just functioned pretty happily and healthily by grade one. Can I give you some stats, Jailers? Sure. Cancer.org.au. An estimated 145,000 new cases will be diagnosed in Australia this year, with that number set to rise by to 150,000 in 2020. So mm -hmm. that means one in two Australian men and women will be diagnosed with cancer by the age of 85. There you go. That's, so it's close. That's bonkers, man. It is. That is crazy. Now, keep in mind, they probably include very benign things and, you know, like, like yeah, melanoma. Yes. Okay. And, oh, okay. Um, there's probably a lot of, uh, not downplaying them at all, but it doesn't necessarily There's mean, other variables. Yeah, it doesn't mean 150,000 people getting, like, you know, stage four something. <sighs> sure, like, like, mortality rate is different to diagnoses um, sure it's like i feel like cancer it's like two things that i see because i'm pretty heavy in the communities where they're trying to extend life mm -hmm. and health span yeah and one of the big beasts is cancer and that's intrinsically linked with aging cellular yep. damage yeah so it's it's like how do we it feels like this huge beast that we're trying to solve is how do we mitigate well i think we know a lot of ways to mitigate but then how do we stop it in its tracks cancer um 
Shit. And that's not I'm not asking. For, that's not an answer. Like you're gonna um, have, but it's like no, no. So I think that's where um, there's so many things we can do in our lifestyle, health, lifestyle factors to mitigate this. Yeah. So I think it's just a matter of control and controllables. But you speak to anybody, and this is this is the crazy thing, and this this forms a lot of how I try to live. Whenever they interview people who are like a hundred years old on TV or like the world's oldest person, sure, right? and they always say, "What's the secret to your living?" You hear everything from like, "I like smoking Cubans," to a glass of red every night, to you know being around friends and family. Yep, like you know, there's just I just think there's a lot more. There's many uh, variables, dude. I I think it's ninety nine percent genetic. Well, look, and and this is this is the theme, like. I, um, as you know, am a amateur conspiracy theorist. Ah, yes. We will talk about this. Oh, yes. Here we go. <laughs> really wind me how, up Wait, how does the conspiracy theorist tie but, into aging? Uh, no, no. I think it's just regarding um, our... Uh, shit. How do I say this respectfully? You don't. I think, I think, I think, I think there's things in the, me- in the medical profession that um, a lot of people are indoctrinated by. Um, like what? I agree. Uh, I think, like, you know, just thinking... Like, so, you know, the stuff's come out around cannabis usage for, um, you know, reducing cancer and uh, epilepsy and... Mm. Um, sorry, I should say CBD and all that sort of stuff. Like, I think there's a lot of things that people just um, uh, withheld from us um, in regards to pursuing a health. And I think there's a reason for that is because the population, like... And this is the funny thing. I'll say this with very... Uh, what's the word? Not very inarticulate today. I just think there's a lot of things that we need to consider because we can't keep growing the population of the world. Like, we can't do that. So we're going to have to have a mortality rate from something. So, because if the world keeps growing, the rate's growing. Like, we can't... Like, the way we are right now, it's not sustainable. So I think there's a certain reason where people are willing to make decisions in the best interest of well not the best interest of in the interest of preserving uh society as we know it and i think part of that's controlled by pharmaceuticals okay go on so i don't i don't know i don't necessarily know specifics around that um and again it's all on source but i just feel like there's a lot of solutions out there to problems that either haven't been discovered yet or have been discovered and are being um hidden um like, you know, there's instances on the news, like with the CBD or stuff. Like, you know, a kid have, you know, 120 seizures a day and had one drop of CBD on his tongue and, like, seizures just gone. Um, I think there's a lot of incidents. I, actually, I saw something recently. I saw the US government um, said something around they have conceded the fact that there's positive use of uh, hemp and cannabis in a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. So they've actually come out now and admitted that, and yet it's still outlawed in many states. I'm just sitting there going, well, it's happening though like like it, it is and that's what i mean transforming I think, I think those things are starting to unravel so i think there's a place where obviously um you know i went through chemo very uh grateful that i got um some incredible oncologists and that sort of thing but i also feel like there's ways of preventing disease and curing disease that are far less pharmaceutical based absolutely but you it's obviously very clear why some of these ideas are suppressed especially previously because of money and business yeah, and politics. Yeah, 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 correct. And like the reality is like, again, we have to have a death rate. <laughs> so, um, well, see the overpopulation thing is a common conversation that comes up. Right. And I've tried to do some research into this and I think people expect the, the rates just to continue increasing. But there's one thing that is mitigating that from happening. And that is fertility rates. Fertility yep. rates aren't anywhere near the same. In fact, they're decreasing. True. Right. Yep. So the, I, the is our world in data they did this like graph on world population and they predict based on the fertility rates that by 2100 we're only going to cap out at about 11 billion like we're going to plateau at around there but that's that's still a 50 percent increase 50 percent well we're at 7 billion now aren't we close to eight but yeah even if it's rough so it's like a 50 percent increase on that but this in, I- in 100 years but this idea that we're just going to keep going and going like, I don't think that's entirely accurate. Yeah, but I mean, shit. But that is a lot of more people, yes. As I said the other day, man, we're hit by an asteroid tomorrow. Uh, yes, we could, Jalus. So, 
could be yeah. coming right now. Like they're they're great they're great topics for conversation, but I just like I don't worry about them a whole lot. I rant about them a whole lot, but I don't really worry about it because like shit, I walk it here and get hit by a bus. Right. Or as I said to Brick last week, there could be an asteroid out there that's coming for us and we don't see it. <sighs> that, have you heard Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about this? Yes, he's an astrophysicist. I have. Yes. Right. He brings some pretty startling. I don't remember exactly all the stuff he talked about with it, but the fact that there's a lot of space that we can't detect. Thank you. Right. Yes. This, look, I think they're doing a really good job with what they have. There's a lot we can detect, but there's a lot we can't detect. And yep. even if we detect it, even within like a period of six months to a year, the likelihood of us doing something about it to mitigate huge amount of damage and catastrophe is Mate. not that high. Right. And that's where, like, you know, what seems far-fetched because we see it dramatized. Yeah. It's not really that far-fetched at all, which is the crazy thing. And, like, they keep talking about, oh, like, you know, we're tracking this comet. If it gets within, you know, 300,000 kilometers of the Earth, yep. we know it's there. Okay. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, you're trying to tell me that they can track objects moving at 50,000 miles per hour, 300,000 kilometers away, when there's, like, billions of them. Well, maybe they can track a, a collection of them. I'm happy for someone from NASA to I would love that. Anybody from NASA? Yeah, comment below. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Come on, talking chimps. Yeah, fucking start a social media war with me. They can't track all of it, right? They can't. That's a fair statement. Of yeah, of course. So that makes sense. They then they sit there and be like, oh yeah, we see all these like you know supernovas, like star deaths and all this sort of shit, and like we see the gamma rays release and all the rest of it. No, you fucking don't. Oh, can I? Br that brings up something. So, what about a solar flares? Right from the sun. Right, dude. That can just I know EMP the whole world. I know, and Row. I've, I, and I've had these like, oh man, not people not, aren't ready. Not, not last night, but a week or two ago, um, I went to trivia. What is my, you? You sent me that message. What does that mean? Like a um, trivia night? You doing Q and A? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not like a trivia night. So uh, Nick, my housemate, uh, his girlfriend, and a couple of her mates and Stubbs, who dogged me this morning, who's not coming back to. My place, who was. So, Stubbs, you're a dog. Um, yeah, we, we've been going to trivia lately um, and having some of the most crazy conversations. Okay, such as? Like, star signs, psychics, the universe, conspiracy theories, the whole lot. Got it. And I went home and watched um, some stuff on the universe and I was sat there thinking like, okay, that's your model of how you think the Earth is going to get blown up. That's fine. Like, you know, gamma rays and solar flares and all the rest of it. But I'm like, they can't predict that's going to happen with any great certainty. So I don't understand how with all these things, like there's this quest for knowledge that's like, unob in my opinion, it's unobtainable. You might think you've made progress with what you know about it, but in a hundred years you might go, shit, we'll miles off. And in the hundred years it takes you to figure out that we'll miles off what we actually thought we knew, we could be dead anyway. But you have to try. Of course you have to try. You have to fucking yeah, go for it. You have to. And I'm glad they do, because like, I- Because found out so much. Dude, and I, love, I love watching documentaries about the universe but yeah the reality is like shit can happen at any time so i like to stargate dude it's uh it's fun i have you have you ever seen like the milky way galaxy yep As for, i've never seen it like properly crazy what is that like where did you go how did you see it um we were out uh, on a school camp uh shit i forget where i think it might have been like out at um god damn where was it maybe the cathedral rangers out past here Victoria, well. yep. Yeah, we're at somewhere, man. And I remember like the teacher pointing out, just look, because, you know, growing up in the suburbs, we see stars, but we don't really see stars. And when we're out there, um, it was pretty cool, man. There was just like heap of stuff that I haven't seen before. So um, the teacher pointed out, well, I mean, this is again, the teacher said that's the Milky Way and whatever. They might have been wrong. Who knows? They might have been pointing out fucking smoke haze. <laughs> but um, yeah, like there was a whole heap of shit, dude, that just like, yeah, in my spare time, I would definitely by a telescope and just like look up at that stuff because it, it fascinates me but it fascinates me the fact that we're not going to know we're never going to know so i'm content with that i'm not going to run around like a headless chook trying to figure it out it's just nice to not know what's going on it's actually sort of cool like a blissful ignorance yeah yeah i like it but i, I also like i like the um i like the the quest for the knowledge but i also like i despise the fact people think that they haven't figured it out because they just couldn't no way they're trying. Adam. They are trying. It's just such an... I think we get disconnected from... I think we become very arrogant as human beings Dude. when we don't connect ourselves with, oh, wait, hold on. We're just like a blip. We're yeah, just like... Yeah. And we also just like decide that something's a planet 
and all of a sudden, uh, it's not really a planet anymore. Uh, hello, Pluto. Right. So, I just these same people. Go, oh yeah, that's that's a planet. Okay. Well, it's a fucking planet or it's not. But you changed your mind like what, like ten years ago? They changed it, like somewhat sure. recent memory. Yeah. So then, okay, if that's not a planet, keep talking. Whatever, do what you got to do. Like make your um, make your mind up about that not being a planet. But then you sit there and you go, okay, well, if that's not a planet, then maybe you fucking haven't got the, the sun's distance from Earth correct. Oh God. Maybe. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe there's a moon that's just not being tracked. Maybe there could be anything. Maybe there's an asteroid coming for us you haven't tracked either. Oh, NASA estimates a football field-sized asteroid collides with our planet once every 2,000 years or so. A car-sized asteroid hits the Earth on average at least once a year. Some of the biggest space rocks in the asteroid belt can be as large as 583 miles across. As icy comets fly around the solar system, the outer layers sublimate in the sun's heat and leave behind a glowing tail, hence shooting star. Yep. Now, is it, just, is, it's, it feels like just a matter of time before a football field-sized asteroid just comes, whoosh. Has to. It has to. It's happened before with dinosaurs. Do you believe that? Yep. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Well, it's, it's, it's not just believe it. It's also like a whole host of fossilization records as well. Sure. No, no, but I, I do believe with that. Um, and that's where it's sort of, I sit there and go, well, are they tracking that? No. They can't because it happens once every 2,000 years. You can't. I mean, you could mathematically model it, I suppose, but yeah, that shit could happen way sooner than what we think. Like, how do they know? If if something's 54,000 miles away, Mm. and so let's say hundreds of thousands of kilometers away, and it's traveling at that speed, there's no way you could statistically predict and go, that's where it's going to land, that's when it's going to hit. So they just throw out these rough numbers, oh, once every 2,000 years. Yeah, right. So where does that come from? Well, so I would imagine that there wouldn't have been one since the current current day calendar we have. Like there's nothing documented in medieval times of people getting wiped out by an asteroid. There's nothing documented around like, you know, the Egyptians getting wiped out by asteroids. So it's been a fair fucking while since that's happened. Speaking of, you know where I'm going to go. Now part of my heritage is Egyptian. Yes. And one thing no one seems to be able to explain is how the hell did they build that? Yep, I know. I know, dude, I know. Like, there's really smart people who have done, like, mathematics and physics of how they build it. I know. And, like, we don't know still. Nope. In in the time period they did it in. And and they've lined up the pyramids with the coordinates of Orion's belt or something as well, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to look it up now. Um, Um, Astrology But the... Oh, no, sorry. No, no. The coordinates of the pyramids are the exact speed of light. Pyramids lined up with the stars. Ancient Egyptian astronomers aligned the pyramids due north by using two stars that circle the celestial polar point nearly 4,500 years ago. Each star was about 10 degrees from the celestial pole, which yep. lay directly between them. I don't know what that means. Yeah, but I think the coordinates of the pyramids are the exact speed of light to like four decimal places or something crazy like that. What? Something stupid, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, like that uh, stuff is... Uh, mind-boggling to me how do you explain that in, let's 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 go jay let's let's go no no i can't explain that that's that's like possible hypotheses nope. hypotheses haven't, dude, haven't got them you don't have them nope it's nope. just too not far out no dude e- egypt is just like i feel like that's in a league of its own man and this is this is what like this is why people i get really angry when people go they label all conspiracy theories the same right now just say for example you believe something totally far which i think is far-fetched right so, if you believe the pyramids were created by some... You say that? Uh, Speed of light, 2,992. Uh, yeah. There you go. Coordinates, 299. Nine. So, it's, it starts with the same something. That's, yeah. that's what I was saying. Interesting. Like, this is the shit that goes through my head, and I remember dumb facts. <laughs> but I remember stuff that just drives me wild. So, yeah, but... I think the thing with that is like when you try and go, okay, and this is, I watched something recently and it just affirmed what I already believed. What did you watch? If you, it's just how conspiracy theories get like um, extrapolated into very far-fetched things when like they're sort of hidden in plain sight. So if, for example, you believe that aliens came down in fucking spaceships and then made that and then left and went to a different, different galaxy, that sounds far-fetched. So if you have a conspiracy theory around that or you have something that's like similarly you know like people have these whack conspiracy theories but then what they do is 
they label that as a conspiracy theory in the same way they label something such that I believe, such as, you know, 9-11, Pearl Harbor, whatever, whatever. They lump them all together. So collectively, they're a conspiracy theory. Mm. Whereas there's some conspiracy theories that are just like total nonsense. What are some ones you've heard? Oh, mate. <laughs> they're that nonsense. I've probably re- like removed them from my brain. <laughs> um, but what happens is when you have a very credible one, it gets labeled a conspiracy theory. Right. And then mentally you get like, this is where the tinfoil hat people come in because they go, oh, well, if you believe that um, there's aliens walking among us, oh, sorry, like if you believe in like, yes, say 9-11 was an inside job, then you also believe there's aliens running the government sort of thing. And then people just go, okay, all of that's combined. They're all wrong. It's like, well, that can be wrong and that can be right, but they can both be conspiracy theories. And that's where it's sort of, for me, I have ones that I believe in and then I have ones that I don't believe in, but that's just critical thought. I just think that when people label conspiracy theories blanket, it sort of covers up stuff that I think is actually true. Right, it all gets lumped in one bucket yep. when it should be treated as individual cases. Yes. Okay. What is one of the most out there ones that you don't believe in? Uh, we could talk a Bigfoot. We could talk Loch Ness Monster. We could talk... I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. But I don't, I don't know. Is that like a conspiracy theory or like a, a myth? Right. Okay. Fair enough. They like coming into the same um, conversation sometimes. Yeah. But, but that's, that's my point. Yeah. Right. I made the mistake there. There you go. No, no. But like I, I'm the same. Like stuff just gets lumped, lumped together and you're like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's wild. It's like who knows? That could have been a creature uh, thousands of years ago or yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Could have been anything. Right. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. I know the more the ones that I do believe in. Okay, go ahead. Oh, uh, shit. Where do we start? Let's start with less sensitive ones. We'll build up. The Titanic. Okay. I'll pull up some uh The Titanic, I believe, was... 1912? Mm-hmm. April 1912. Fuck yeah. Woo! Damn. Uh, the 15th? The 12th? Oh, close. Oh, oh. I set sail on the 12th. It set sail on the 12th and crashed on the 15th, something okay. like that. I was close. Anyway. If you, if that's the twelfth, I'll be. Anyway, shit. Uh, I was close. Um, but yeah, so uh, there's some conspiracy theories out there that the uh, Titanic was an insurance job, just huh. the old written off asset. Interesting. So, um, so purposely crashed into the iceberg. Mm-hmm. To claim, so but was insurance claimed on that? No. So what happened? Um, what happened was, again, this is unsourced alleged stuff, but I love the conversation. Yeah. Um, White Star Line, is wherever it was, had three ships. Okay. Um, and prior to I think it was 1911, um, one of the ships. So there were three three vessels. Um, as they do, they sort of build like multiple vessels. That t- at that time, obviously, boat building is quite a big industry. So they're trying to build the fastest, the most luxurious, whatever, whatever. Um, and they sent one vessel out um, on a... <clears throat> excuse me. They sent one vessel out on a cruise run, like, you know, just been uh, birthed and whatever. Uh, and it crashed into, I think, a military a military boat. Either a military boat or another vessel. Okay. Um, and because of the circumstances, it wasn't covered by insurance. So White Star Liners who've just built this big ass crazy boat that you can imagine at that time was, you know, in modern day, like multiple, multiple millions of dollars, maybe, maybe a billion, um, didn't have it covered on insurance because of the circumstance of hitting the military vessel or whatever it was. So what they did was that was going to send them broke, but the other ship was insured, which was the Titanic. Titanic. So they swapped around... Um, plates on the uh, the bow or the stern, whichever one it was, maybe both. Now I think they swapped plates around when they came, like and made it back to the boatyard. They switched them over and then sent out the the one that already crashed. The one that already crashed so it was damaged as the Titanic. Huh. So what they had to do was then, because that was insured, they had to crash to get the money to cover off the loss of the other boat. On top of that, there's also there's more. Well, there's, dude, it, it goes it goes really really deep. It also goes to the fact that um, at that time the uh, there was no reserve bank, 
So there was no centralized uh, banking system through America. Um, again, this is unsourced. Um, well, it's sourced from somewhere. There's probably you didn't, uh, make, you didn't make it up. Unsourced is a uh, unsourced is a what's the word? It's a shout out to my man Clay who runs a uh, his potty. He uh, you seen Bricks unsourced T-shirt? Yes. Yeah. So that's my guy Clay. Um, but what happened was um, they were attempting to centralize the uh, finances of the country. So with no reserve bank, um, the government had to collect money solely through tax. Um, then in trying to centralize all this currency and take ownership of basically like loan money from like say the 10, the 10 richest people in America had enough money to finance the American government, right? Because you can imagine obviously Damn. there's the big discrepancies in yeah. capitalism. So the, the government needed money and these people said, well, we'll loan you money, but we become the Federal Reserve and we control cash flow. So we, we lend you money, you pay it back in interest when you collect tax from the people. Okay. And that's how tax is basically um, and interest rates are adjusted based on the reserve. So um, one person said, no, we can't do that because um, you know, that's taken away the power of the people. We're giving all the wealth to like the, the 10 richest people are now going to control the banking sector of this great country, which is America. We can't give them all the power and control over the whole country's finances. So the government are saying we want to partner with all these rich-ass people who can obviously bankroll the government. So it'd be akin to say like, um, say right now, Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg yeah. and someone else and someone else, like multi the equivalents saying, we'll lend the government as much money as you need, but you pay us back interest. And then when and you collect the interest by collecting tax from the people who Holy are paying tax to the government, right? And the person who didn't want to go ahead with that was uh, on the Titanic. The owner? No, no, the guy, the guy who was um, sp saying, no, I'm not going to sign this reserve bank set up for uh. and then he was on the Titanic with all his wealthy possessions and then apparently he would sub for some reason the possessions were withdrawn prior to the boat leaving but then he was on the boat Did he? so then so he's dead yeah he obviously but and then what happened was they went on to set up the reserve bank which means obviously they can control cash flow they can lend the government money so then the, the government can borrow money to go to war and all sorts of stuff so is that insinuating he I may have totally fucked that up, but that's pretty sure what I've read. But about. is that insinuating the government then made some type of plan to crash the boat? Hmm. Maybe. Where did you where was the source on that? Where did you uh, hear that? Where yeah, you the the interwebs, you know, everything's on the interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read something that I just saw. J.P. Morgan planned the disaster to kill his rivals. Don't know if you've heard about this one. Oh, well, that, that would be one of them because J.P. Morgan's obviously in the banking sector. Okay. According to this theory, millionaire J.P. Morgan planned the Titanic disaster to kill off rival millionaires Jacob Astor, Isidore Strauss, and Benjamin Guggenheim, who all perished aboard. The theory hinges on the fact that Morgan had originally planned to sail on the Titanic, but changed his mind shortly before it took off. Ah, that's the part that I fucked up. So he jumped, he came off the boat. So, oh, go. so the, the guy, the that, banky so, guy. Yeah, so that's one of the things I fucked up. So but run, it, run but, that back. But, but, but the premise of what I was saying was true. But, ha, but it doesn't offer an explanation of how he caused the ship to hit the iceberg to kill over 1,500 people, let alone three men he supposedly intended, wait, three men he supposedly intended to die to top it off. The theory claims Morgan wanted to kill them, but because they opposed the creation of the Federal Reserve, <coughs> even there though Aston and Guggenheim don't appear to have taken position on it, Strauss actually supported it. So we had two out of three who were against it, potentially. Well, there you go. This is uh, history.com. Oh, well, there you go. So Cred credible source, history.com. <laughs> Interesting. Now, that, that's not a wiki page that I wrote. That is something else. I actually, That's not where I read it from. I didn't read it on history.com. But look, there's another one that Titanic never sank, right? Ooh, ooh. The people that love to the, the insurance fraud story. So maybe uh, the, the theory starts with the fact that the, the Olympic was damaged while sailing from Southampton, England to New York in September 1911. Oh, um, see, I said 1911. I'm piecing some of this together. And had to return to Harbour. The company repaired the Olympic and sailed it to New York and back. It so they're saying that it never sank and they returned it? No, who knows? The fuck does that mean? I don't like that one. I think mine was much more dramatic. Ah, the third one. A mummy's curse doomed the Titanic. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yes, it's got to be that. See, this, this is what I mean. They throw in like all these dumb fucking <laughs> theories that are clearly not going to happen. Right, but look, so strange they, shit has happened. I know, but they throw in like stuff like curses and, and fucking witchcraft, and then just go, oh, well, that means the other two are probably and it delegitimizes yes. the case. Yes, right. Correct. But you have to be able to recognize that yep. and see between the lines. Yep, yep, mm. correct. Motherfucking right. Titanic, boom. All right, interesting. Look, 
Stranger things have happened with politics and business and money, right? Way stranger. People kill people and for he, money. And here's the other thing, right? Oh, God. I hope we don't have many American listeners. Sorry, Jay. It's just most of them. Um, so, he, which countries on earth do not have a centralized bank in terms of a reserve? I don't know. Have a guess. Google it. Get on the interwebs. Can you define a centralized bank for those well, who Well, the Federal Reserve. So basically, they've created the Federal Reserve the same way I said before. The, the, the Federal Reserve is a private entity that, which the government borrows money off. Rothschild. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Oh, don't go down the Rothschild path. What countries go, go do not have us. private... In the year 2000, there were seven countries without Rothschild owned of controlled central bank. Afghanistan, Iraq, Sudan, Libya, Cuba, North Korea, Iran. Hmm. Hmm. What's the common link in those countries, Alex? War. Wow. And, hmm, elaborate. I don't need to elaborate. I just think that's, for, I think that's far more than coincidence. Okay, so... Wh- <sighs> now, there's a lot of other shit going on in those countries as well. Yes. I just think... There is socioeconomic... I, I, just think, I just think that the influence in that stems a lot deeper than what we see through the media. So... Why don't they have centralized banks? Maybe they don't want to. Okay. So maybe that's maybe they they prefer communism. Maybe they prefer to not be interfered with. Who knows? But what are the impl- maybe, maybe, maybe there's no uh, there's not enough GDP and there's not enough money in the country to start a centralized reserve. I don't know. Who are these? Uh, rock I'm not an economy. Oh, don't go down that path. That's a rabbit hole you don't want to fucking go down. They might be listening. <laughs> So the Rothschild family is a wealthy Jewish family, Ah Shabbat Shalom, originally from Frankfurt, that rose to prominence with Mayor Rothschild, a court fact at the German... La- what? Okay, so they're a royal family based in this in the 1800s. Yeah. That seemed to own a lot of shit. Yeah. They uh, do. Oh, Jesus. An estimated combined net worth of $350 billion. That's not much. It's hidden in plain sight, dude. So these Rothschilds own all the federal bank reserves federal uh, reserve banks? i don't know i don't know i don't know but it's i think too there's, deep? there's some i think there's something i think there's something else to it like i just find it hard to believe that some countries don't have federal reserves and they're not capable of governing themselves which i think they are but could the possibly that the rothschild family don't have federal reserve banks in these countries to promote war which is a very big money making um entity for a lot of governments I'm, I don't know. I'm reaching. I'm just looking yeah, for, dude, I'm grasping uh, for straws dude, here. I, 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 that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I do. So this is what I do in my spare time outside strength coaching. Yes. You go in. Oh, damn. I jump down rabbit holes, dude. Now, the next one, the most obvious one mm-hmm. that people say we're ramping up, we are neurally priming in our conspiracy theories. Yep. Is 9-11. People love to talk about this one. And Christian Woodford... I didn't realize how much he was a conspiracy theorist, right? He yep. loves it and he enjoys it. I'm going to get him on one day. I'd love to get you both on oh, and have on. a good old chat yep. about all this. Yeah. Uh, so th- this is where like, I, uh, th- these things are hard because like I'm sensitive to the fact that- Because it's, it, it the outcomes are real. The outcomes are very real. They're absolutely real. So, I'm But s- like we can have a conversation about- And I've, and I've been to- um, uh, yeah, one Grand trade Zero. center. Yeah, man, it's like. Have confronting you been inside? Ranting as fuck. Oh, dude, I fucking nearly cried. Yeah, same. Like it's, yeah, it's it's crazy, man. It's so, emotionally devastating. Yeah, so I'm sensitive to the fact that people have opinions on what's unfolded. Yeah. Um, but I think trying to define the causality and speculate about the causality doesn't take away from the outcome of pain suffering and death like no no and, and the empathy you have for those people yeah, and yeah the compassion yeah. and love yeah yeah um i just feel like there's you know a trillion dollars is unaccounted for there's what a trillion dollars is what unaccounted for on september 10th september 11th like yeah yeah dude you can you can go through this right so the secretary treasurer whatever they call the u.s government announced there's like many 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 billions or trillions of dollars unaccounted for which obviously you can imagine politically is not a good thing to uh go through and then the next day the biggest story that i've ever seen in my lifetime unfolded i don't buy that okay so according to some estimates we cannot track 2.3 million dollars in transactions um donald 
Rumsf- Rumsfeld said. And then I'm looking at this article. This has been misinterpreted. I by thought many. it was significantly more than that, but that's okay. Perhaps it is. This is just one source. Metabunk.org. Ah, it's a debunking website. This has been... Sorry, you obviously see the agenda. That's mm-hmm. okay. This has also been misinterpreted by many people as, as 2.3 trillion actually going missing. However, it's really just about the way the money was accounted for. Okay. The technology revolution transformed, uh, according to some estimates, we, we cannot share the information from floor to floor to this building because it's stored on dozens of technological systems. That was from the Secretary of Defense. Uh, I don't know. You try and tell me they can't transfer information floor to floor. That is what Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld said. Yes. I can see that. We can't transfer information floor to floor. That is, an, that is an odd comment. In the 21st century. The Pentagon was missing $2.3 trillion. Okay, so then what? All right, big lump of sums missing. Like, coincidence is a real, but also, like, intent is a real. So it could be linked. Yep. Yep. So, so then what? I also find it hard to believe that the other buildings collapsed with no damage to them minimal damage to them what do you mean they crumbled right the twin towers did yeah uh, oh the pentagon you mean no no uh there was another another building uh oh. i think uh tower seven or tower five. Oh. yeah and the official cause is like fire okay. it wasn't struck by ship you can uh, interwebs interwebs it i think it's tower seven much smaller tower. Someone call every Eddie Bravo. Seven world tra- controlled demolition conspiracy theorists. We're going deep here, for and there's chimps. Al- and there's also, and this is where it was pretty confronting. And I think I watched this on a very sort of mainstream YouTube video, but they showed this building, World Trade Center Seven, mm. I believe it was. Um, obviously not well known. Twin Towers well known, like mm. you know iconic, like you know landscape buildings. Sure. Um, and they showed the, this falling down of World Trade Center 7 on film, whatever it was, to, I think, 500 um, engineering and architecture majors at some college in America. And they said, oh, what, what's, can you describe what's happening here? And like 490 of them said controlled demolition out of 500. And then they said, well, if this is controlled demolition, would you be surprised to learn that this is one of the World Trade Center towers that was you know, adjacent to the Twin Towers. And they go, oh, no, no, like that was terrorism, that one. Hmm. After. After the fact. After they've declared that they, in their, again, students, so, you know, not necessarily, you know, experts, brightest, probably smoking dope in their dorms at night. But stu- like all these people studying engineering and architecture said, oh, no, that's controlled demolition. Oh, how can you tell? The free fall, the acceleration of like all the mass, you know, all that sort of stuff. And then they told them that it was World Trade Center 7 and they go, oh no, well then that was hit by, that was like terrorism. Like that was a fire or whatever the fuck they came up with. And that's where I think people just get indoctrinated by shit. And you think about the coverage of that and also like little things, I'm pretty sure they found one of the fucking guys, like one of the alleged terrorists, they found his passport in the rubble or some shit. Like, no, you fucking didn't. Plane crashes in the building that high, you don't find the passport. Like they, they never even found all the bodies. Mm. And you're trying to tell them you found passports and shit. Fuck up. Mm. Don't have it. So, uh, so Tower 7 collapsed? Yeah. So there was three towers that collapsed? Yeah. yeah. But this is the thing that that's not reported on. But there was another one that collapsed. For sure. Absolutely. Google it. Go. No, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, here we go. A 47-story skyscraper, Tower 7, um, that stood across Versi Street. Uh, it was part of the World Trade Center. was intentionally... Wait. Yes. Okay, th- this is the Wikipedia, by the way, of the conspiracy theory. Mm. was intentionally destroyed with explosive... Explosives, unlike Twin, Tower, in Twin Towers, Seven World Trade Center was not hit by a plane, although debris uh, did damage it um, by fires, which burned for seven hours until it collapsed completely at 5.20 p.m. Um, and, oh, oh what, what timing. Guess oh, what we're talking fuck about. Sake, this again. Man, <laughs> fuck, we're just Cons- fucking talking ships. Conspiracies. My I'm not doing it. 9-11 nah, Tower 7 man. Anyway uh, that, That's that's a hard one I don't want to go into that That's going to upset Tower Well it was an inside job If you, if you honestly believe Controlled demolition it, no, well, no 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 It wasn't It was fact It is a fact That's controlled demolition Fact Fact There was thermite Found on the structures The steel beams If you honestly believe No 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 If you honestly believe It was done by 
12 hijackers in caves. You're fucking joking. I'm sorry, it's a, just a joke. Anyway, I'm going to leave that for time today. How's everyone doing? We're How's just talking, talking chips. chips we're just talking chips. JL. Listen, we're just guys just talking thermite. chips. Have you heard about the thermite? Yeah. Do you know what ther- I don't. thermite... It's part of... Look at, how, look at the steel beams, how they were cut. Sideways. Mm. That's how controlled... Listen, man, it was controlled demolition. It was proven... All of them? Or just seven? Well, mate, fucking World Trade Center... That wasn't even fucking hit. I think World Trade Center of seven or whatever it was, just pancaked. What? Larry Silverstein, the guy who took the loan out, who took that... Larry Silverstein was the owner of the, t- the towers, You right? know some details. What's that? Jesus, you know some details here. Yeah, I'm trying to be all diplomatic and... Hold on, wait, no, no, no. These people need... No, Larry Silverstein... Bro, please. Just for a minute. Just for a minute. I'll just get it on the mic. Like, pull up the chair. Jay, move over a little bit. Sweet. This is what I wanted. Oh, this is... This gets me going. Shut up. Oh, yes. Now, yeah, listen. My dream has come true. All right, Alex, you want me to talk? Just shut your fucking mouth. Okay, go. All right, so Larry Silverstein was the owner of the Twin Towers, right? What he this asshole did before, like, I think it was um, six months before 9-11, took out, like, this, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, insurance. Uh, like, a 100-year insurance on the Twin Towers, right? Okay. And um, it was, like, worth billions of dollars. Anyway, long story short... The reason why it was a contr- the reason why they wanted to take it down is because they tried to um, get uh, the twin towers fixed up because it was actually full of asbestos and it would have cost them so much money it wasn't worth it. So it was to do with another other factors as well. The fact that they America needed it's actually read. There's a book written by I forgot I'll find his name. Put it in the show show notes. He talks about the reasons why. The biggest reason was pretty simple. They needed a reason to go into Iraq. Right? They needed a reason to get. The, the, half the reason why any reason you go into Iraq is for what? What's the main reason America would want to go to Iraq? Think. What does it have? Lots Resources. of water. Yeah, but what's the main reason? Oil. Oil. Money. Okay, they need a reason. They needed... But, they, do they, but do they actually then go build refineries in Iraq? They ne- Just let me finish. They needed to pin it on a patsy, right? And the patsy was Osama bin Laden, right? Now, Osama bin Laden was friends with b- the Bushes, Right. If you actually re- really, if you read up on Osama bin Laden and his link with the Bushes, and you read up with his links with the CIA, right? Look at look at the money transference in terms of they they were hiding Osama bin Laden after nine eleven, right? This whole thing was planned. Hold on, you're saying that America hid Osama bin Laden? Jay, weigh in on this, please. No, 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 you go, buddy. Anyway, moving on from this, right? This is mate. If you, look, this is pure facts. I'm spitting truth here. I'm being serious. Read up on this. Anyway. So Larry Silverstein, this guy, he took out a lease, right? Now, when the Twin Towers hit, he actually, re- if you write the name Larry Silverstein, you'll find okay, out Larry Silverstein. he made billions of dollars off the 9-11 attacks and he claimed it was two separate terrorism attacks. Larry Silverstein, owner of, owner of Twin Towers. Insurance. Insurance. Read out, no, just read it for everyone and then we'll do a little background check. Well, it's going to take me a little while. Can well, it shouldn't it? really. It should come straight up. Well, there's a lot of words. There's a big, big theories right Well, here, normally, okay? um, yeah, anyway, where's Brick? His worth has been estimated for $3.5 billion, yep. okay? I'm, I'm going to try and find the, the insurance well, claim it's not right that hard. Just write a 9-11 Larry Silverstein. Well, I'm doing that, champ. Anyway, moving on. This guy, he he took the, the insurance out, and when the Twin Towers were hit, he claimed that there was two separate terrorism attacks, so he got double the money pretty much. Three, okay. Here we go. The insurance policies for World Trade Center buildings 1, 2, 4, and 5 yep. had a collective face amount of $3.55 billion. Correct. Yes. Okay. Following step into lever, Silverstein sought to collect mm. double the face amount, $7.1 billion, on the basis that two, two separate, separate airplane actually, strikes see? entered the two separate buildings constituted two occurrences yep. within the meanings of the policies. Yep. The, cu- the insurance companies took the opposite view and the matter went to court. Don't, don't you find it weird that he took out that lease six months before 9-11? Maybe he knew something that no one else did. Huh? He took out the lease on the buildings. Six, six months before 9-11. Uh-huh. How do we know he just wasn't leasing the buildings? Just because okay. that's what he wanted to six, do. Okay. Don't you find it interesting that six months before the, this crazy terrorism attack, a, a, an attack that changed the world forever, yeah. this dude takes out this massive policy. Don't you find it weird? Oh, how about this, right? In the weeks leading up to 9-11, get ready for this, right? In the weeks leading up to 9-11, most of the floors were vacated, right? Now, here's the kicker, right? The security systems were off. Guess who, run, guess who ran the security system for the Twin Towers? Jeb Bush, George Bush's brother. Interesting, hey? There was people walking in and out the trade center, right? In and out with wires and copper wires. And what, what were people doing? Right? They were putting explo- that People say, oh, how could they have done that? People would have known. 
hundreds of people message the CIA, CIA and the FBI saying that these people were coming in and out, in and out of the World Trade Center a month before the attack, floors were empty. All these people coming with copper wire, all these people are doing, like, what were they doing? So the, the part that I have trouble dealing with is like, I just don't understand because that means a lot of people have to be in on this conspiracy. People said this. Right. But, but how, many, how many people, like, how many people could you voluntarily find to go and... Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll that out. I'm going to roll that out completely, right? Please do. Please. So anyway, you think about this, right? If the government want you... Thinking. If the... <laughs> I don't know where we're going to go with this, but um, uh, <laughs> if the government wants you dead, will they... You're dead, right? They would kill anyone because there's plenty of people they have killed already. Like, they've silenced people who have talked the truth. They have, mate, they will kill any mate. Now, I'm guarantee you, man, I know what you're saying, people say that, but anyway, 9-11... But, the, but these people have to be, like, just workers. We say, you walk up at work on a Monday, and, like, you're going through plants... Mate, this is the government, bro. They can, mate... Who assassinated John F. Kennedy? I have... Uh, uh, the government assassinated did? John F. Kennedy because of Marilyn Monroe and a number of re e what? reasons. Right, read up on it. Why don't you, you tell me? read a fucking book or something? You're going to tell me to read a book. Me? Oh. So, <laughs> you, hold on, hold on, hold on I know so much information. How do you think I got this information? You didn't read books. The, the internet? Yeah, I did. That was true. Okay, so how many books have you read lately? Then what are we fighting for? Oh, my God. Um, but no, being serious, no, I've actually read books on that. And you might not think this, but I've actually read books. No, no, I, I, I have thoughts about it, but I like, to, I like to think about both sides of it. That's all. Well, I don't. I think of one side. I know you do. But... Uh, um, Keep going But no But this is the thing right? I, I, Look I'll be honest with you Jay thinks Very um, uh, Balanced I think one way I'm against p Pretty much If you actually read Fuck I really hate saying this Listen Thermite Why the fuck Was there thermite In the rubble Why What is thermite used for yeah, Fucking yeah, control you know that, you know, yell, that, that actually like very sensitive. So I'm it getting Jay. It, it's annoying because people are fucking dumb. Listen, thermite. Did you see the um uh, the, uh, the 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 pictures of um the um oh, what's it called like the site of demolition of the 9/11 attacks? Right, there was like the the heat the heat map was so hot it was like molten lava. What makes molten lava? Why molten lava? Oh my god, thermite. And also another thing. Buildings don't just pancake on top of itself. It's retarded. Free fall, spe free fall speed does not happen. Did you not see how it pancaked? And then people say, oh, what happens is the floors were popping out. Yes, for the floors to pop out, that means every floor has to pop down. There was no resistance. Come on, man. But please. okay, okay, okay. Let's say it was controlled demolition. It was. Then how do we organize the plane yes. to get to the building? Okay, stop. That's a good question. Because that's good. That's do, you timing. do you honestly... How's it timing? They just detonated like with a... With a no, but as soon as the plane hit, they're like, someone's going to detonate that, right? No, no, no. The plane no, hit... No. It was a trigger. The didn't okay. To I, want to, I want to think about this, now, right? Now. By the way, just let you know. They oh, that's true. They reckon oh, Hani no, Hanyo, no, no. Hani Hanyo, one of the attackers, yeah. they think that he, he the who name. couldn't fly a Cessna... Do you know what a Cessna plane is? A Cessna yes. plane is a small plane. Yes. You're telling me that Hani Hanyo, some... A guy from a cave who had three weeks of training at some aeroplane school can fly a 747, which I've asked people who are aeroplane pilots who say that manoeuvre that he did, they couldn't do. It was that hard. You tell me he could do that? Which manoeuvre? He did a 360 manoeuvre with a 747. This guy couldn't fly a Cessna. Come on, man. Were there any of the terrorists on board who, who could fly? Mate, they went to this... They went to this flying school, right? And they asked the, this, the, the guy who trained him, could he fly a plane? He could barely fly a Cessna. A Cessna is a small plane. So who was flying that? Obviously not them. Someone else who could actually fly it or a control plane, which there are available control planes. Come on, man. Read a book. <laughs> man, man, listen. All I'm going to say is Muhammad Atta. Muhammad Atta who? was... The, Get, do you guys not know the main terrorists, right? Muhammad, I've done my research on all of them, right? Muhammad Atta, parents has come out and said that he's he, he's not dead, he's still alive, right? Hold on, he was on the plane, wasn't he? Listen, I'm going to tell you something, right? Muhammad Atta was the main hijacker, right? They're, his parents have come out on... He's trying, his parents are trying to come out of mainstream media saying he's still alive. It, it wasn't him. They, what they needed to do, they needed to find people who looked like... Arabs and they made them the scapegoats. Don't you find it funny that they found their passports in all the rubble? What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah, what right. the fuck? Mate, listen, they're planting evidence to give a narrative. Hold on, but you said, Jay, that, that the opposite, like how they're going to find a passport yeah, in the rubble. I, said, I can't believe they found it. Mate, listen. Oh, oh also, also, Pentagon, no, no, right? I'll, I'll oh, go. Pentagon, most secure place in the world, and you give me three seconds of grainy footage. 
get fucked. Mate, listen, the whole thing was a yeah. fucking cover up. Mate, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, mate. I, you, I'm the biggest believer. Mate, I'm not a fucking crazy, a, a bit crazy, but it was inside job. The reason why they did it, it, it's deep, deep in the American roots because it's all to do with shock and awe. Right? It's called a red, fl- like a, I think it's a red, red flag. Herring? Red herring? Red flag attempt, right? What oh. they do is, it's all to do with shock and all, right? They want to control the people. What they don't want is they don't want the people to have control. So example is, when you first saw that, when my parents first saw that, it's all shock and all. Yeah. It's emotional. holy shit, it's emotional. Who, we, don't you find it funny they pinned it on Osama Bin Laden in under 24 hours? The whole thing was planned in years in advance. Years, they reckon 15, 20 years in advance, they planned all this to happen. They needed an event like 9 11 to happen to control the people, to go into Iraq to get the oil. I'm, I'm, I'm being, if you actually open your mind and you be woke, actually be woke, don't just take what the official story is saying. They didn't want to do a commission for the 9 11 attacks. They didn't. They spent billions of dollars on finding out about Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, but they didn't want to do a commission on something that killed how many of their own people? 3,000 own people, but they didn't want to do it. They were forced to do a commission, forced, right? They forced. They gave it to some guy who was like an American war hero. He had to step down. And they gave it, then they gave it to a guy called, if you look at him up, Philip Zalakow, who's some patsy for, for, for George Bush. He was like George Bush's crony. He had all, before he even started day one, he had all the chapters done. He knew what to write. But the smoking gun was... Uh, chapters well, for what? For, his, for the commission book. You write a book about what really happened, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a load of shit. The smoking gun was was World Trade Center Seven. What? Why was it? Why was that the smoking gun? Because World Trade Center Seven pancaked on itself without without a um a plane hitting it. It just got hit by debris, which would make it the third only um, skyscraper building ever to fall down. And do you know what the first two were? The first two World Trade Center Sevens ever to fall down, ever to fall down from a plane attack. Ever there was three of them, and those were the three. I think from five. The first one's like, because the official cause of that was... Okay, for fire, all right, fire, right? But a pancake. Like, but buildings have burnt for like days, yeah, days, days and be fine. And days yeah, and days. be fine. Do you know, guess what was in World Trade Center 7? What? FBI files, the FBI. No, right? wait, no transfer no, of tr- data. Correct. And, the and here's, the, here's, the, here's the best kicker, right? Um, why did BBC report 25 minutes before World Trade Center fell? They reported that World Trade Center fell. It was in the background. So my question is, who knew... They should have subpoenaed someone at BBC saying, "How did you? Who told you about World Trade Center Seven? How did you know it was going to fall when you? It was in the background of a news report. They said it collapsed, but it was right there. How did they know that? No one followed up on this. Yes, correct. Look, it, it's up on there as well. BBC reporting. Right, BBC reporting. World Trade Center Seven. It's unbelievable, mate. This is this is the biggest cover up. It will never come out though because it's like John F. Kennedy never come out, but. If you're actually smart and you do your... Re- mate, I have done hours upon hours and upon hours of research. Hours. Mate, there, have you know there's, there's architects for change in 9-11? Do you understand the best architects in the world are saying that that could not collapse like that? The world leaders. A world leader in controlled demolition said this, looked at it. This guy's just gone like this. Alex, controlled demolition expert went like this. That's a controlled demolition. Straight away like that. It's a controlled demolition. Hold on, hold on. BBC News reported the collapse of seven World Trade Center 20 minutes before it actually See? fell. See? And the source is BBC. No, no. Right? They can't. They, what they wanted to do was they should have subpoenaed whoever. Who was the one who told the presenter to say something? Fuck. Yeah, exactly. Hectic, eh? Mm, Wood's not crazy after all. I'm ding, just, ding, ding. I'm, I'm just trying to uncover. Okay, is it, this is an internet? Holy, this is a video. Dude, it's hectic, man. It's Holy fucking shit. hectic, bro. This is an archive video Dude, that you hectic. can see. Dude, it's Don't fucking mind. You're going to mind fuck yourself. What the fuck? Alison, how you been anyway, buddy? Yeah. Been good, man. Been good. good. Jane Stanley, the reporter who announced the class prematurely, called it a very small and very honest mistake. Oh, come Caused on. by her thinking on her feet after being confronted with a port that she had no way of checking. Oh, come on, man. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me... Alex, can I tell you something about please, this, right? Please, please. World Trade Center 7, they covered it up. They pulled it. Right in, Larry, right in Larry Silverstein, write this in, right? Listen to what he said. This is the owner of World Trade Center 7. Larry Silverstein, pull it. Right, pull it. Larry, and he, you know what the, what the term pull it means in controlled demolition? Bring it down. Watch that video. There's a video of, of, of what? Watch Larry Silverstein. <laughs> oh, man, this will do... I just clicked the first yeah, link. Did, did, well, did World Trade Center buy terrorism insurance? Watch this. this has absolutely gone off. Off the rails. Larry. We all knew it was going to happen. So, Jay, this, is this the stuff that you were repressing that uh, you wanted to talk about right here? This stuff? Yes. No, nah, look, like I said, I'm, I'm very sensitive to this sort of stuff. Wait, hold on. I'm not saying I'm not... Are you saying I'm not sensitive? Not at all. Not at all. I'm just saying, you know... Um, 
Here, can you just listen and what he says? Pull it. Watch this. Okay. This is. Uh... I'm gonna turn this up. Just seriously, shh, listen. Put it on there. World Trade Center Seven had always been considered the starting point for rebuilding. Located north of the slurry wall, Seven had been cleared faster than the rest of the site, and there had been no bodies to recover. Pelted by debris when the North Tower oh, collapsed, Seven burned until late afternoon, allowing occupants to evacuate to safety. the only building ever to fall down from fire. I remember a call from the AGF Fire Department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building. Okay, stop, 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 stop it now. Stop, stop now. Okay, so this guy's fucked up. Hold on. Correct. What? what? The pull it, right? So it's, he's controlled demolition. The complete control. The fire captain said this to him. I never, ever communicated with him. The fire captain, they interviewed him. He said, I've never, we never communicate with anyone from him. It's a controlled demolition. They pulled it. The reason... I just need to hear that again. He pulled... So he got information they won't be able to contain it. Last, let's pull it. Maybe the smartest thing to do is pull it. Pull it. Uh, so we watch it go down. That decision to pull. What? Listen, stop. What? That was the biggest fuck up ever, right? And you know what's funny about that whole thing? It was absolutely controlled demolition. I'm telling you why. It's because it free falls. There needs to be resistance. If it's a fire, normally there's resistance. Not every floor is going to pop off and pulverize. Now I get passionate about this because. The floors were pulverized. Do you know what pulverization means? Literally, there was everything was dead. Everything was broken up. Come on, man. Fuck. Look, this guy, honestly, it's all to... Man, this runs so deep, man. Like, I'm thinking, man, do you know what's funny? People think this was Bush and all this, mate. He's a puppet, mate. This is all to do... Who? Brad's what? Here. Who? Brad's here. you got to go. Why? Because you've got a house inspection in 10 minutes. Oh, shit. Um, tell, uh, tell him I'll... Um, Tell him I can't, I can't go, I've got, to, I've got to do this. I can't, I've, I've got to fucking, I tell him he, he, he'll go. I've got to, I tell him I, shit, come on. Yeah. All right. No, I can't. So, Brad? Yeah, so, Damn. Like, I, I'm nowhere near as a strong willed as old Bro, mate. he's done more research into conspiracy theories in 9-11 than I think he does into s &C. Big wood. No, hold on, what I'm saying. Bro, I didn't think you would be educating me or at least imparting this information on me so succinctly Mate, this is interesting I, i've re just to let you know i want everyone to know out there i have researched this so heavily yeah like when i'm passionate i think everyone knows i will research it, it it just makes me sick that they would do this um and people might say oh you're um you're you know you what's the word for it that that's where i still have trouble believing it because i i just can't believe yeah, but, but, but but this is the thing which people don't understand I'm not saying I believed or don't. I just like I have thoughts about it that don't add up. Okay, that's yes, that's, yeah, that's what I'm. Coming but, but, to now. but okay, if we never question the effect, like if we just go yeah, yes sir, no sir with the government, listen, I'm cool with that. I agree with that. I'm just saying that like, I, I don't necessarily think it was fully inside job. I don't think it was as it happened. I, okay, just, just, just parts of it. This for is me interesting. You say like, I, like, I can't. Oh, okay. I can't get my head. No, no, no. Fair enough. So he, here's a good. Uh, I like what you said. They might. They, people. Some people say this. What Jay says. Okay, listen. It wasn't all their fault, but they were complicit in a few things. So maybe they knew, maybe they knew a terrorism attack was coming and maybe they said, okay, what we're gonna do then is we're gonna put explosives in these three buildings. When the planes hit, then we'll pull them. Keep talking. Because that's, that, they were complicit with it, correct? Yeah, I mean, like I said, these are, these are the questions. They were complicit. Uh, here comes the wood, so, jacking into the matrix. I think, listen, oh, here's another one. Here's another one for you, Pennsylvania. Right, Pittsfield, Pennsylvania, right? What happened in Pennsylvania? Okay, so they, they, this Flight 93, United Flight 93, right? And this whole thing was built off. They had to have a flight that was to do with the American, you know, American fight, the American spirit. So what they did was American Flight 93, American Flight 93, that was, that was the flight, hello, yeah. that was the flight that they made where Americans- Can you hear it? Yeah, 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 we gotcha. Um, sorry guys, um, but you guys are gonna hit some knowledge bombs here. Um, that was the one that was, um, Flight 93 was the big one, like, you know, the let's roll. Have you heard what that they say, let's roll? Have you heard what, what happened with Flight 93? No. Okay, Flight Look 93, the, right, Flight 93. Um, 
That was the one where they fucking the um. So United Airlines Flight 19 flight, no. was a domestic scheduled passenger flight that was hijacked by four Al Qaeda terrorists on board as part of the September 11 attacks. It crashed into a field in Somerset oh, County, yes. Pennsylvania, during an attempt by the passengers and crew yes. to regain control. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, okay, now I haven't heard about this. Okay, so what happened was they they bring this whole listen. I'm not no, I, this this story does my head in every time because what they've done is they've created a narrative to say we they fought back the passengers fought because you know what that where that plane was supposed to go the White House apparently that was going to go the White House holy shit Cut, now 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 here's the kick up to the and just remind me because I'm going to come back to this flight ninety three story mm-hmm. the Pentagon the White House you cannot fly within I think a, a certain radius. a radius yeah. right now if they do if there are planes in a radius or a, a missile in a radius, do you know what happens? There are uh, heat-seeking missiles that are launched from around those areas, right? That, that technology has been available for over 30 years, right? My question to you is, why didn't those, those um, heat-seeking missiles go after him at the Pentagon? Why? The Pentagon is the most secure place in the world. Man, do you know at the Pentagon, if you walk around for too long and you, you, you take photos, security guards will come up to you. You're telling me that a plane could even come close to that airspace? Oh, and then also hit an area, hit the only area that was brand new, like that was um, getting um, remade? Come on, man. It hit a certain area. Fuck off. They give you three seconds of grainy footage. Anyway, the bombs thing, it's the same in Australia. If you, if an, a plane goes near, um, uh, what's it called up in um, Canberra? What's it called? Uh, oh. Um, Parliament, Parliament House. Hey, yeah. You know, you know, if, if a plane goes in there, do you know what happens? He, the missiles go off; they kill whatever it means, if it's in that area, right? It's prohibited airspace. Correct. Right now, my question to you is: Why didn't that happen at the Pentagon, the most secure air, uh, um, place in the world? Why? Do we know if there even is prohibited airspace around that? Jesus Christ, Alex! I know Come there on. is around the White House, bro, bro. Please don't. Uh, like let's a, let's say there is because that would make sense. Come on, bro. Just don't be. Don't 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 think I'm stupid. But I know my shit. But anyway. So, Flight 93, right? Let's roll. They, they, called, they, they had a thing called Let's Roll, right? What's that mean? So, Let's Roll was um, the passengers supposedly took over and tried to take over control. So, do you know what happened? This, this pilot, what he did was he flew into... He had to kill the passengers. So, he flew into this Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania on the ground. It was a big plume, right? To this day, to this day, Alex, the coroner has not found one body there to this day. Not one body, the coroner, Right? When the plane hit, right in on your computer, Flight 93, debris. Where was the debris? Surely there was debris. No, there wasn't. Have a look. Hold on. To this day, there was no debate. Man, look at it. Use your common sense. Okay, the fireball in the plane was carrying 7,000 oh, gallons of fuel, yes. scorched hundreds of acres yeah. of earth, and set the surrounding trees ablaze for hours. The crash site in oh. Pennsylvania near the town of Shanksville was littered with wreckage from the fragmented plane with debris fields scattered nearly eight miles away from the initial point of inter- impact. Despite the devastation, investigators were able to recover both the plane's flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder, which was found buried more than 25 poli- feet below the ground, though few yeah. humans remained. Few, though few human remains were recovered at the site, medical examiners were eventually able to positively identify the 33 passengers, seven crew members, and four hijackers aboard Flight 93. That is history.com. Seems to they seems to have found some stuff, man. That's, they, look, this listen, is one source, right? Listen, listen, listen. But they seem to have found some stuff, my, okay, contrary to my, what you said. Okay. When a plane crashes, there is fucking debris. Yeah, right? they said there's debris. Uh, the, is that look at the photos, man? There is no debris. Okay. And also another weird thing about Flight 93, which I never understood, was if you actually look at the people, right? So, what, what they've done is they. It's but, funny because hang, um, on, but hang on, if you don't believe the story, yep, then you can't use the evidence in the photos to make your case for it. But, 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 but it's, it's, it's using common sense to know... It, no, no, I know. What I'm yeah, saying is like you're yeah. saying that you don't believe the narrative, uh, but then you're saying to look at the evidence of the narrative to prove that you don't believe it. And we're saying there is evidence... Okay, no, but... Uh, 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 look, any... How do I explain? Any plane crash, there's massive debris, right? If you actually look at the Flight 93 photos, it makes no sense. They didn't show... They, they showed every small piece of debris. Come okay. Like. Wikipedia investigators found very light debris, including paper and nylon scattered up to 8 miles, 13 kilometers from the impact point. Other tiny aircraft fragments were found 2.4 kilometers away. Okay, so there, there were some debris. Small debris. And look, I, we don't... We're not experts in this. We don't know how 
how, how much mass and velocity an object needs to fly in order for things to get disintegrated and evaporated, oh, right? Oh, come on, we Alex. We don't know. Alex, do you honestly believe a 747 would evaporate? Come on, There was man. some... I don't know. I don't know how uh, much uh, debris there would be from a giant plane okay. flying into the ground. Okay, let's, let's, let's put it this way, right? If, if, regardless, if a 747 hits the ground very hard... Yes, some of it will evaporate. You're going to expect to see like a fucking wing or something. Yes, Cor- I get it. Thank you. You would expect that. Yes, listen, Flight 93 was one of those ones that I sit back every time and that was that was the biggest. You're always like, what the hell? It's like, where were the hell was the debris? So uh, w- now what? Okay, but uh, there's minimal debris. Uh, now what? What is that saying? The, the, the whole thing was... Once again, this is. Do you understand that they, if they, if they, the government were going to do this, which I believe, I believe they did, okay. they pre-planned this whole thing. I reckon what they did is they put a bomb in the ground, blew that up, and that was the plume. That was a plume, right? And they scattered debris around, right? Do you know what? You know, at Flight ninety three, they found it. Come on, man! Right in this hijacker's passport found Flight ninety three. Like, come on, man! Come on, surely you're smart. You think this is just no? no like, like I said, there's th- there's things that don't add up that. I'd like to wrestle with the truth a little bit. Like, I just find it hard to believe that there needs to be some crazy number of people to go along with this, though. Yeah, man, I, I agree. But like, like, how do you get this many people all complicit in the same thing and not one of them has since come out against it? Now, I'm not saying that I'm all for it or all against it. There's just parts of it that don't add up. And this is, to my case earlier, that's where... I think it has merit. And then other people go, oh, well, um, you know, that's where conspiracy theories get sort of lost in translation. I think there's a lot of merit to some of them and some there's no merit to it at all. But um, lumping them all together is where I think everyone makes the same mistake. But what is clear, what seems to be clear, let me just make it very clear that I don't have all the information here and there's a lot, there seems to be a lot of details and muddy water here. Right, yeah. there seems to be some conflicting evidence. Um, There's always going to be. That's the nature of it, right? Right. So let's be clear about that. But about the passports, Zaid Jada and Saeed Al Gamid's oh, yeah. passports were recovered from Flight 93 crash site. Oh yes. Um, oh, but everything else evaporated apart from paper. Come on. Wait, that is odd. Oh no, shit! Come on, man. Even... I mean, but how much of the passport? Like, how much? Dude, do they you found. Need? Look at the photo. They f- oh, anyway. And also, don't you find it funny? Look at the names. What 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 emotive response are we trying to get from that? Why? Do, look at the pa- Look at the papers now. Right? We are we are starting to be indoctrinated to hate the Middle East. They are started. That started but, twenty but, but, years ago. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are indoctrinated to hate to our enemies of the Middle East. They're not the enemies. They're not. They were created as... Yeah, they want- it's the same with Russia and China too. Correct. Mate, listen. Listen to the names. They're all Arabs. The whole thing was to evoke anger. This guy, you know, they're against us. How do you be... And Jay understands this and so do you. If you're not with America, you're against America. It's a team. They're a team. And if yeah. you're not with us, piss off. And you can't... The thing about Americans is you cannot judge the official. You can't judge the government. If you do, you're a, get, you're a bush basher. Don't be a bush basher. That's how they say so you think Bush and the Bush administration was in on this, or the Clinton? Which d- one? D- no. <laughs> listen, they're pa- listen. This is all patsies to a higher power. The Illuminati run everything. This is a whole another d- thing. But listen, <sighs> we've we've gone up a level right but, but, now. But if you think we're real deep, okay. Listen, uh, what? Okay, let's define. I don't see. I don't believe in the Illuminati. But we have to define it because everybody speaks about it. So Illuminati. Like, okay, it okay. So Lu- Illuminati are the richest and most powerful people in the world, right? They control everything. If they want a war... Okay. So they're a classification of very wealthy, influential people. Is that fair to say? Are you Googling something or are you just distracting yourself? Well, I have work, but anyway, you, have, you should be lucky that I'm even on here. <laughs> I'm very moment. thankful. Thank you. Um, how would We've you... Def- going for nearly two hours. Right, we're talking chimps. Damn. Don't look at your phones. Fuck your phones off. Oh, yeah, hold on quickly. I want to tell you what happened, right? So li- listen up, right? So... Personally, so these richest people. So, do you guys know who Henry Rockefeller is? Do you guys know the Rockefeller? I've Rockefellers? heard of him. Yes. So Rockefeller, um, it's a good building. No, in New York City. You're thinking of the Rothschilds. Rothschilds. You know the Rothschilds. Oh, and we, so, we talked Hen- about Henry that. Rothschilds, right? So Rothschilds, they uh, interbreed. What what that means is they keep it in the family. Do you understand that? That's incest. That's fucked up. Do you know okay. What? Now what? Do, it's, now what? They fuck their family because they want to keep then it in the what? bloodline. Hold okay. on. Do you know that Rothschilds own all the banks? <laughs> Listen, they own 
all yep. the banks, reserve we, banks. We, we the reserve banks and who doesn't have a reserve bank in the yeah, world correct. Iraq, Russ, Syria, what, North Korea they, they go in there to get the, mate this is all to do with money money controls people Oh, so we're on the same wave with that stuff. Should it, man, covered, listen, that earlier, do you know what's disgusting? Fucking greed, right? The Rothschilds, mate, it's... They will not... Do you know they control the media? Do you know they will not talk to anyone? They own everyone, pretty much. So if they... What they do is they control... If you control the media, you control... Who are the most influential people in the world? Who people listen to? You understand it. Rappers, musicians, sports athletes, right? Yeah, Look at musicians, right? Michael Jackson... And this is a big conspiracy oh, theory, right? Okay. Oh, okay. Michael Jackson... In my opinion, and if you listen to his sister who says, I, I, can't, I Janet. can't, Janet Jackson, I think it was Latoya saying that I, they killed him, they killed him. And they're asking who's they, and she goes, I can't say they'll kill me. Michael Jackson, I believe, was in the Illuminati, I believe, was um, set up by the Illuminati about all these. They pushed a narrative that he was a child molester because he kept trying to bring out, hold on, he kept trying to bring out that there was a pedophile ring in Hollywood. Who was, Michael? Yep, read up on it, read up on it. There, oh, but there's this. We're not going to go to the Epstein path, though. Don't fuck with me. That's anymore. next level. That's next. That's not even next level. That's mostly. Hold on, but there's there seems to be documented evidence and recounts of, of Michael molesting children. So you're saying he, you think he didn't do that? No, not at all. He's a real good. There was guy. a whole documentary on. Yeah, it. but mate, mate, the Illuminati. You can set up anything if you want. They can set up anyone. They set him up. They made him, mate. They had to find a narrative because he kept talking out against them. I'm telling you, read up on it. Look at his last few singles. He was aggressive. He was angry. Doctor, that, that could be for a number of reasons. Doctor Conrad Murray gone through a lot. was paid off. It's a load of shit. Anyway, I don't really want to go into this because this is getting deep. But anyway. If you don't understand, you got to understand the Illuminati and what is their goals. Like the Illuminati. What is their goal? Well, one, 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 like one power, one, one world, one but world. Haven't they, have they already achieved that? According to what you're saying. But do you understand? Okay, How? let me give you an example, right? If there's, if the world cannot live past a certain amount of people, right? So it's all to do with this section something. They want to control how many people on this earth because past a certain point we can't, they can't, we can't function. We run out of all resources. I don't buy that because that that doesn't take into consideration technology and the growth of technology. And as soon as I start talking, you go on your phone, so you Mate, can miss I'm, a point. I'm listening to you. I've okay. It, what it doesn't take into account technology and the things that we progress with that can mitigate or it can increase the amount of resources that we have and the efficiency and effectiveness to which we distribute those and create those. Yep. Like Singapore doing this vertical building um, gardens and vegetable growing, mm -hmm. right? Technology like that, uh, um, Factory, uh, no, man-made uh, animal pro or meats now. So it's uh, it's genetically created meat with from no animals, right? Things like this that can support and sustain a large amount of people. Regenerative agriculture is another one. So it's different ways of of making agriculture more efficiency, so we don't kill all the topsoil. There are ways technology is improving. Alex, 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 I understand what you're saying, right? And the efficiency, but read yeah. up on it. The, the world cannot survive. I'm telling you, this is not. What's the number that you've read? Uh, oh, let me give you some water, gentlemen. Yeah, please, please, thank you. I'm just getting fired up. Here's a up. kettle I prepared earlier. Wait, hold on. Where did you get that from? Uh, Woodford Sports Science Consulting. Fuck, good on you. Well, that's a nice sound, isn't it? Ah, uh, there we go. Jailers. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's herpes now. Yeah, I'm not that's hot water. Yes, it's from a kettle. It's boiled. So you know how you don't like drinking um, well, tap water? What the fuck is the matter with you? Yeah, I know what you're so doing. So you boil the water. I, I, I know, I understand that. That's and what it cleans it. No shit, but mate, I'm not going to drink hot water. <laughs> Next time, mate. You're a bit fancy, aren't you? What happened to fuck fancy? Can't drink some warm water. Oh, mate, I'll be honest with you. That is just stupid. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> what are you doing on your phone right now? Because, mate, I'm organizing my life while I'm trying to teach everyone and you Look, I really do appreciate it and I want to go in. Okay, so oil, Iraq. You s people say that we they went to war with Iraq to get the oil. Yes. Right? To control the, to get in the oil bank as well. Okay, different different issue, but with the oil, what are, you, are we saying that America built oil refineries in Iraq? How did they get the oil? I, I don't know enough about that, and I don't th I don't think any of us do. I don't think like did they build oil refineries? Jesus Christ! How can you start building oil refineries in a country? There was oil there already. Why do you think they went in there? They're not building oil. So they took over the oil refineries? Yes, there's there's a lot of oil in Iraq, right? Listen, there is a number of factors. I do, I can't articulate at the level of what I've listened to, right? Because these yeah, guys next level. are insane. And when they say it, they say it with such... It's like sitting there going, their facts, you cannot object to objective information. You can't. Look, see, that's objective information. You sit there going, he's right. And um, yeah, it, listen, it was crazy. Like, you... 
I could like the the whole thing was nuts. Think about think about the the Pentagon one is still crazy. Three seconds of footage. Why? Why is that? Well, that what? is odd. Can we Why? talk about the fact Epstein didn't kill himself? Oh, that's another thing. Epstein, Have you, you seen this? Okay, so my, Epstein didn't kill himself. But he was in a pedophile ring with a lot of high-profile people. Um, and all they do is they pedophile around young women yep. and probably boys. And Epstein didn't kill himself. They would have killed him for a shoal. So he would have, man, he, he had a, um, a plane man. called the Lolita Express. Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, they're all pedophiles. It's all part of this big ring. Michael Jackson, man, Avicii wanted to release it. Here's another thing. I've had a room about Avicii um, getting killed by Illuminati because he, he, talked to, he used to talk about pedophile rings. Dude, pedophile rings are huge, man. So people who expose pedophile rings, there's, there's well, mate, there's a lot of danger you think in that. about well, well, come on, man. Yeah. These people that these people are the most powerful people in the world. Prince Andrew was found out to be one of the who? royal family. Jesus Christ, does this guy know anything? I don't or? know the royal family. I Prince Andrew that. is in the royal family, and he was found out to be a, a, literally. Isn't he an old man? You can still. That's what a pedophile, Damn. pedophile is. Yeah, that's, that's fucked up. If that's true. Listen, I'm gonna leave you guys on this. So what about the noose from the, the he get those orange jumpsuits and he made a noose? Oh come on, Alex! It was the if we honestly believe Jeffrey Epstein after all that what in Jeff? Do you know he was going to no? But I'm saying that there wasn't like really marks okay, on Jay. it. There weren't really no, marks Jay. on his neck, right? Nope. Or, or yeah. anything? Uh, nope. You know, apparently as well. But he, mark, was gonna, marks from the wrong he was going to sing. He was going to sing. Yeah. He was going to sing to get reduced jail time. He was going to talk. Yeah. Imagine him talking yeah. and what it would he exposed. That's all I'm going to say. Yep. Yeah. And like the ceiling, like the cell ceiling wasn't even high enough for him to hang himself. Yeah, mate, right. Yeah. There was all these jumpsuits in the in the, in the cell. They would have, they would have, and they reckon they they had an autopsy, and a, a guy looked at his neck and he said he was strangled to death. Right. Listen, his hyoid bone, hyoid bone, which is the yeah, yeah, it was, chin, was broken among others, which is more common in cases of strangulation. He got he, what happened was he got strangled to death, right? Because they would have said, uh, listen. They said, we've got to kill him because the Illuminati would have made the decision. We've got to kill this guy because he knows too much. This is why, man, people think the Illuminati is not real. The Illuminati is real, but no one knows shit about them. We don't know shit, but it's real. It's the richest people in the world. I'll give you an example. Two years ago, 50 of the richest people in the world all met up in, I think it was France or Belgium, and no one reported in the media. Why? How do you know about it? It was on, reported on one media source. Okay. Right? Why, why don't the mainstream media report that? Oh, maybe it's because they're talking about what the fuck they want to do with the world. Maybe they want to fucking report about how they... Listen, it's all to do with control. Control and money. And I'm going to leave you guys on this. At the end of the day, I feel like that the government will do what's in their best interest. Do I believe that the government have, like, a, a evil? Look, I don't know. Like, I don't think so. But at the same time, I'm very sceptical of 9-11 in general, and that's what it started. Like, I, I'm not one of those people who believe the official story straight away. I believe, it, I believe the government will do anything in their own favour, and it's been proven. Come on, bro. They've known for years cannabis is good for uh, med, uh, medicinal use. We know why cannabis is outlawed. We know why. Why? Like, because of uh, William Randolph Hearst. We've talked, we've talked about oh, this, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's true. So um, in terms of... You need a paper mill company. And basically, um, him and Harry Anslinger were using newspapers and they started uh, demonizing marijuana to stop the commodity of hemp because it was going to cost him millions to convert over to hemp, which is becoming really popular for industrials. So instead, he started printing stories in the paper about some new drug called marijuana, which is actually used to describe a Mexican wild tobacco. But he used the Mexican tobacco term marijuana for cannabis and they got it illegal by spreading propaganda, saying people were smoking it, blacks and Mex Mexicans were raping women. They printed it in his own newspapers mm -hmm. and everybody freaked out because there was, uh, there was nowhere to fact check they spread the information using his own Hearst newspapers yeah. and he outright lied to make up stories about marijuana and legal and right. so then Congress outlawed it and now here we are and now finally have to reverse all the bullshit from there do you, do you, stop, do you, I like that do you like how if you control the media you, try and, you control the people yeah and the information so, so what happens is a lot, of, a lot of these rich pricks they own the media Richard, Richard Rupert Murdoch will dictate who get pretty much whatever, whatever helps Rupert Murdoch out by the way Rupert Murdoch if you don't know is Fairfax Media i.e. Me, paper like a media main media hold on but it's like now media is like decentralized like and everybody this, has access I, I, okay, to it. Okay, okay. So, so Mark Zuckerberg, right? If you're against Trump, right, on Facebook, you actually get banned these days. If you openly, um, a, a, a get, no, are you with Trump? You're, you're far right. You get banned. Mm. Is that freedom of speech? No. Man, once again, the media, man, these people will always pay money. They'll always sell out to the person who's got the most money. And do you know who's got money? They've got the power. If you've got the power, you've got the m women's. First you get the money. money. Then you get the power. Then you get the women. Must protect the um, Listen, I'm going to leave you guys on this. 
Look, I might not be right. I might. Oh, that's very honest of you to admit. If you actually believe that. No, no, I might not be right, but I know I'm right. But um, oh, okay. No, 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 no. You just ruined it. No, no, I might not be right. <laughs> yeah. But all I'm gonna say is this: I can't be a hundred percent wrong. There's got to be stuff that I'm saying that's right. That's right. That's right. I agree. With um, but saying that though, it's not all gonna be right. But at the same time, do your own do your own fact check. Stop believing what the government say to everyone and don't take it as gospel. You know what I do? Do my own research. I research, these days I research everything myself. I'm just gonna, I'm never ever gonna believe anything the government, any government says, anything. If the government tell my kid to get um, like that injection, a measles injection. Oh, I'm, don't go anti-vax on that. Hold on, let me, I do my, re I've done my research on that. No, I'm, I think they're all fucking loonies. I think it's fine. But people used to say that you get like all these diseases, like oh, your, your kid autism. gets autisms, but it's been proven not in research. So I did my research before because I thought if I have a kid, I need to make sure. Sure. So I did full research, did check, um, checked all the literature, so fine. He, so here's the thing with that. I think anti-vax is fucking one of the dumbest things we've ever heard of. Yeah, no, I agree now. Yes. But there has to be a margin for error where everybody responds to stuff differently. Correct. And there may well be a case where some people don't respond the same way to vaccines as everybody else does, and they end up as a byproduct of that with some issues. Yep, true. But I don't believe that's enough cause to not vaccinate. Yeah, the connection of autism and vaccines stems from this one source that has been like disproven countless times. Um, there was from 1998 not, study. Not, not necessarily autism. Oh, I but think. you're saying that an outlier may respond adversely. Yes. And that people run with that. Yes. For sure. Yep. Like people can get sick from vaccines and Correct. flu shots. Correct. Yes, you're giving them the virus and the yep. antigens. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't like, I think if you're an anti vaxxer, you just, you're an idiot. And. Stay an anti-vaxxer because they'll do us all a favour. No, not necessarily but, because herd immunity. But, well, no, no, they'll do us a favour in the in the way that, like, you know... Like natural selection? Yeah. Okay, sure, got you. I'm, uh, glad, I'm glad you said that because I didn't want to have to be honest with that. Why? But hold on, that is natural selection. If you want to be a fucking like moron, Like the idiots and the people will die. You, you're not going to you're not gonna immunise a billion people and have a billion people all respond to the vaccine. Yeah, everyone's different. I right. like that. I like how everyone responds. Everyone... And you will have an outlier that some people will develop something off the basis, whether it's an illness, mm. a disability, yeah. whatever it may be. Let me go crazy here. Let me chuck this out here. Hit right? me. Put, put them on, man. Let, let, let me go crazy here. I honestly believe, by the way, there's a cure for AIDS and cancer out there. I believe there is. There's more money in treating it than curing it. Right? Now, people... Listen, I don't think big pharma is bad as people say, but I still reckon big pharma are fucked. Um, I think there's a cure for cancer. Someone's had it for years, but... Come on, really? Yep, 100%. I honestly, I'm in this camp. I'm in all these camps because come on, man. Like, how much money goes to cancer research? A lot. Correct. Like, come. it just keeps going. Listen, man. I, yeah, but... AIDS yeah. was a man-made disease by a fucking man fucking a monkey. Like, come on, bro. How is that man-made? Because the man fucked the monkey. It's, then it's just... It's uh, not... <sighs> I wouldn't call it man-made. It's not biologically made. People didn't have the intention but to make it. He fucked a monkey. Of course he you did. You can't just categorize. We said this today. Like I feel there's some some things being withheld from us in the medical industry. Oh no, Jay. Of but course not. You can't say there's categorically one cure for every cancer when they're all different. Probably, yeah. Fair play. Fair play. Um, like you've got you got blood cancers, bone cancers. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Fair play because you have had cancer before. So no, no. But that, that's what I mean. And like, did I, you have I, I did believe, you have leukemia? Or? Uh, I had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Which can cancer the, the Can I ask you a serious question? But I, I've always, and that's not being, how close were you to death? Were you ever closer than, oh, nah, not really. Yeah, Be serious. Yeah. Well, because. Like, yeah, close. Do you know, you know, I found this out, bro. Jared Roughhead with his melanoma, apparently if they didn't find it within that week, he'd be dead. Yeah. And uh, it was that I, bad. I don't necessarily think it's like within the week, but. No, 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 no. What I said you, is, you, you, if yeah, they didn't you, get. You can get past the point of treatment being effective. Yeah. Correct. And um, uh, with you, when you told me you had cancer, it makes sense because when I first met you, I thought you were malnourished and undeveloped. And that makes sense. <laughs> uh, no, but it, no, but, I don't mate, know whether to mate, laugh or 20, like you're 20, 20, 20 years apart. No, but but if I, I looked at your dad and he's thick and juicy, and then you look at you and you're skinny and ugly. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. Your dad's not a bad looking guy, and then I look at you and your brother. It's like, what the fuck happened to you two? Um, it's going hard, Jack. No, no, but I'm not being rude. But your dad's no, not bad no, looking. No, no. no. What so, happened with you? Well, uh, obviously there's a lot of growth and maturation yeah. in childhood, which yeah, that's like so I, I've had echocardiograms to check on the growth of my heart size is it I've fine had, uh it's smaller than other you've got people, the heart of a warrior jay thanks mate your dad uh, or your dad is thick though Admit, got, is your dad thick like he's a thick chested man he is am i wrong in saying that am i wrong in saying that I think he likes your dad yeah like no but, but then i look at you yeah. and your brother no offense i went to a football game and him and his brother exactly like jay was giving him shit across the fence jay a bit harsh they did get belted though 
Um, and Jaden him look with light, and then his old man is a thick chested man. And I'm always in my head. I didn't want to say it back then. I, no, what what I, I didn't want to say it back then, but I was like, ah, Jay and his brother shit. are like, like skinny and malnourished, not very good looking. And then you look at his dad. It's like he's a good looking dude. He's a vital nourishment. Yeah, man. and then you look but, at him. I'm like, dad, dad was like my brother when he was that age. Like I'm I'm broader than my brother. Are you? Are you Jay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, carry on if you believe that. But if you yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, dad was like us when he was our age. Please don't ever say that again. That's going to disrespect your dad in some way. I'm well, I'm serious. Please don't do it. And I really like your dad. Keep going with the story. I really like this. Um, but no, what I was getting at was like, like how you see me is not off the base. Like the, oh, stuff, so, the, the, the stuff that's affected me from your, develop, your physical view, development. You, you wouldn't see that. So like my bone density is not what it should be. What? Do you really? Know what it is? Sorry. Do you know what it is on the scale? Yeah, it's like zero point. Six or something. Really? Seven, seven, yeah. So hold oh, on. Can you? Well, you it, what, it was. It may, so, it may have improved. So you can break your bones a lot easier than just me, like someone who's a superpower guy. Superpower guy. Um. Yeah. It's, it's it was, it was, I think it was zero like point zero point six to zero point seven at the time. It, right. it should have gone up on the basis that I yeah weight do train resistance training. Yeah, stuff sure. Now. Um. But it's not where it should be. Yeah. Uh, she can improve it. I have Gilbert syndrome, which is just an ongoing liver thing that I need to manage. And I think I had echocardiograms to check on the growth of my heart size, which I think is smaller, but not like small, small. Yeah. But, but, but what I'm asking you, did that affect your growth? I'm being serious. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe. Because maybe. When, when, I first, I mean, pro- when I first met you, I, I could never get May- on. Maybe I should be six foot. No, no, maybe. I couldn't understand. Like, I was like, when I first met you, you, you were skinny and yeah, just really skinny. I thought maybe you had like um, a physical development disease. But, I'm, but ne- I'm, being ser- I'm not being rude. Well, but you, you met me at a point in my life where I just had gone through No, you got, went through a fair bit. No, no, hold on. I know that. Um, but I remember first meeting you, but then funny, you know, bro, Jay, I'll give, look, I'll give but you... But this is what I keep saying to people. You've, you've seen my body, and I, I say it to everyone. I'll give you... You've seen my body. I will give you credit. Not- I'll give you credit. I'm not going to lie, but I didn't want to tell you this back in the day. When you came back from NC State, I was like, oh my God. Jay, you were... Man, fuck. Mate, that... that- dude, dude, you were fucking huge. Ah, uh, fuck. Dude, tell everyone. How heavy were you? He was thick. A relative Dude, to what you were. your chest was fucking huge. Yeah. How many times were you lifting and eating? Was that all you were doing? Uh, I was eating like <laughs> four and a half thousand calories a day, lifting f- six days a week with yeah. one day of yoga. Sexy. Fuck Dude. yeah, man. Dude, the NC State developed programs are the best in the world. Why didn't you just maintain that? Like Mate, you don't like, have to like, even maintain like a, that. Like a discipline. I hate myself for it. You can get back there, though. We know you can get no, back no, no, there. No, I'm... I'm, I'm in the midst of work at the work. So what like I, I'll put a bit of weight lately and my goal is to get back to where I was. Fuck was yeah. Over. What were you at and what did you go to before before you left and then when you came back? Oh shit. Because well, I have I mean, my own transformation oh, in Singapore. I can't, I can't remember exactly but I put on I put on over there 28 pounds. Oh, I thought you were going to say kilos. No, Even I, that, I, that's, I, that's, a, that's a lot, I put, man. I put on 28... I put it's on like 12, 15 kilos. Yeah, it's like yeah, 13. I put on 28 pounds in 14 weeks. Four, eight, twelve. Yeah, it's like Jesus, that's yeah. aggressive. Uh, Did you get stretch marks? No, uh, no, not at all. My knees killed though, bro. Go squatting. Oh, you squat a lot. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Do you squat? Cause I see you squatting now. I, I see you getting back in and get meant to lifting, man. I, I did. I did front squat one point eight two times my body weight. I um eighty two. Wait. One one point eight two. One point eight two. One point eight two times body weight. Yeah. That's, I love how you say strong. I see you squat. You're not here all the time, and people go. When I train, it's good, man. I no, don't res- like seeing. I don't like being, man. Every time I'm training, I train by myself. Yeah, yeah no, me too. That's why I don't train. Thank you. Like anyway, do, can you explain to everyone? It's like no, dude. Like my time. Like that's why. Like I, I don't like wearing headphones when I train, but I also don't like talking to people. So I have to fucking focused. Yeah. Um, uh, front squat, can't back squat because of my uh, fucking. Pra- oh, it's true. Praise to hope to. If there's a God up there, man, I hope to God it's not cancer. No, no, hold on. You said hope there's a God. I've seen you wear... This is what I want to talk about. I've seen you wear earrings with a cross symbol. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm... Oh, fuck. It's gonna, oh, I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Like, I am. But I'm not into God fully. But now... I've, I've been to a lot of shit in the last year. And I believe in, in believe in the higher power. I believe that there is someone up there helping me. Because there was a time... Oh, fuck. I've told you on this podcast that I survived... I don't know how. Those are the worst times of my life and something kept me, go- man, I didn't, I told you, I was done. I checked out, like when you check out, it's, I told you, that is the only time in my life, man, I didn't, you heard me, I didn't want to be here. I'm like, man, that was it. My mind was, when I make my mind up, that was it. Yeah. And um, something up there, I don't know what it was, man, kept me here. But I believe in this a higher power. Do I believe in God? It's, if it's a higher power, yeah. Now, hold on, but respect, 
but yep. also you you are wearing a symbol that represents Christianity, thus Great. the birth of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and everything that represents. Yes. But you're saying, you're not explicitly saying that you believe in that, but you believe in a higher power. I went to church while I was over in the Philippines. Like, there was a church there. Okay. Yeah, and I, I felt like, when I went in there, I walked in there and I felt something in here. I can't explain to you. I just felt... Mm. Okay, energy. I wanted to become a better person. I just wanted to change and... I just, I don't know, I feel, I can't, I don't know how to explain my, my words. I can't articulate this to you how I want to, maybe because it's, uh, it gets a bit emotional because I think of things. But do I believe, I was wearing a cross that symbolizes the birth of Jesus Christ. You'd think I believe in it. Mm. I do, but then it's, I'm half, half, right? I used to be an atheist, mm. right? Atheists, for everyone out there, but some people might not, not yeah. know what an atheist yeah, is. Atheists don't believe in any, you know, they believe there's, there's, there's no God, nothing and I believe there is a higher power. If it is God, it's God. But I don't know. I just I just believe there's a higher power. That's what I believe. I don't know what he thinks. I don't know if you're an atheist. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I fluctuate. I fluctuate how I feel about things. I'm at the point now where, like, I... I personally don't believe in anything. But I like the fact that people believing in something gives them some sort of structure and clarity through and hard hope. times of life. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a utility to religion. Yeah. Yeah, there is. So like I um I don't believe in anything in particular, but I like aspects of each religion. Like literally like every single religion, there's yep. parts of it that I really like. Yep. Um there's parts of Islam, there's parts of uh Judaism, there's parts of Buddhism, there's parts of Hindu, like different parts of each one. But there's also parts of each one that I don't like. So um yeah, I don't really necessarily believe in God. I think uh, I think that's just our innate desire to be, you know, live a structured and meaningful existence. I think that's where we seek it out. I just I just don't believe in it. But you, now the thing is, you can find that structure and meaning without falling into an indoctrination of correct yeah. religion. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of people do get indoctrinated. Correct, but that's where I think some people like to have that um i guess what's the word they like to have trust outside themselves that they yeah. will fall in the right place and good on them uh i don't really feel that way so i i prayed to god during my darkest times mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's what that's that's what i'm Man, saying my hardest and time. i think some of that's like yeah. some of that must be innate in that yeah. every, everybody in a dark time does Fuck. That yeah so you you will hear like really smart scientists who don't believe in God like in really tough times they will do these things that that like superstitious universal higher power things like praying. I, yeah, Why I, is that? Because it's I, so I, interesting. I, I I thought that I, seven days I said I'm just going to pray every night before I go to bed. Yeah, and um, I did, and I I said things that is only for myself that I kept internally. I literally did it for five minutes. Think about me talking to someone by myself for five minutes when I was in a room. For five minutes by myself. But I felt like it cleansed me and I, th I believed in something up there once again. So I did it. I came out on the other side. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, if people find purpose for that stuff, why like, not? good on them. Yeah. Yeah. I got no issue with it. Right. It gives you a purpose. It gives people hope. But the thing is, when people start trying to convert you, when people think my way is the, best, the best way, way, you should join my team... Like veganism, like carnival, like like any religion, like any team, come on my team. My team's the best. All the other teams. It's like the USA. What we're talking about team before, USA, yeah, yeah. right? People want to pit each other against each other, and we forget they're all on the same team. Human Homo Sapien. Does anyone watch this podcast? I don't care because we've just wasted a good two hour, like an hour. Like, it, like honestly, it doesn't matter. I don't care, Jake, and I don't want to care. Can I ask you a quick question while we're here? Yeah. I think Borzillo's been getting a bit ahead of himself. What kind of lashing should we give him? None. I like that. Uh, I would also be very strongly advised against saying stuff like that on. Oh, no, mate, it's, it's just... fine. No, Are it's Are you all serious? Good. Oh, fucking hell. All right. It's all Do you know what? Sue me. Sue me my, all my money I don't have. Good luck. Uh, yeah, just trying to help you. Strange, oh, okay. Oh, stranger things on the internet have been said, and oh. it's all good. Are you serious? Well, let me lash you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lash me. Oh. oh. <laughs> Did you not get developed as a younger kid or something? <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Like, fuck. Can I, listen, first time I met Jay, man, I'll be honest with you, I thought he was the biggest fucking gimp ever. And I'm like, this guy's a fucking loser. But saying that though, hold on, let me finish, Jay. There's a good yeah, story. Yeah. Do you not want me to say something nice or not? 
but it's always like no, it's, hold it's on. Like the managerial approach. But you do the wrong way. You use something <laughs> bad. It's something nice and something bad. It's ah, the other way. Like the old sandwich. It be nah. It's a n- negative sandwich. Listen, it's I'm a shit sandwich. Do you know what? I'm joking with Jake. Uh, Jake, I'm joking with Jake. No, listen, um, uh, Jay, uh, where if I reckon. We talk about the staff, 50 jobs. By the way, congratulations to Woodford. 50 jobs were created. Dad just told me yesterday, 50 jobs. But is okay. I'll 50 wait. overall. Do you understand? Wait, what do you mean? No, go, go, go. No, no, tell me what you're going to say. Like, the absolute number is one thing, but also the number of, like, who's still in the industry. Who, like, the mate, quality mate, of the Mate, 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 what important. I'm saying... Wait, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Not to diminish I'm it, not, really I know, I know what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, without that, at least I gave him an opportunity to get paid something before yeah. and there was nothing. Yeah. So, get platform. Man, I'm fucking proud of that, but 50 um, staff, and I'll be honest with you, 48 of them I can't stand. <laughs> Two of them. One of them I like. The other one, I just fucking annoy the fuck out of. And the rest? No, there's fucking... Oxygen thieves, really? No, I'm kidding. Oh, that's rough. Now, nah, listen. See, this is what I don't understand. I can't ever understand this about you. Oh, please. You sit there and go mega spiritual and believe in stuff and profess these good qualities, and then you just flip like in an instant. And I don't understand where you put your time and energy. I don't like. I just. I'll be honest, Shark. That's it, a great point. I don't. Um, but can't you harness that into something else? Like, no. there's shit that I don't like, but I don't act. We go to and get wound up about every day. I don't get. I don't think I get wound up about it. Like, I just, he just asked. I just told him what I think. It, 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 come on, if you honestly believe I'm being serious about, I only like two people. No, I know, but no, exactly. w- no, no. What I'm getting at yes, is please, like go. other I'm, stuff. Under Maron, under Maron Irish boy, go. Other stuff we discussed this week. Yes, like, yes. You let so much get to you. But you, but okay. This is interesting. People do say this. It's funny to say this. So let me clarify this for, for everyone out there, right? Like, I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't understand. Yep. Some stuff when I, should get to so, so get when, to when, when it, stuff that's like... When I start... So you're talking about when I start fights on into, um, the social media. Yes or no? Yeah. yeah okay, well, okay, not, okay, not, good, not good. always social media, but sometimes, I just it's, get upset. sometimes it's in person. Okay, okay. So let me clarify with everyone. When the social media stuff, just let everyone know, I do it for... I, want, I know I'm, I'm going to get people pissed off. I get a reaction out of people. I, I understand social media is a game about... I actually um, learned a shitload of to do with uh, WWE. There's a heel. Do you know what? Do you guys know what a heel is? Yeah, he takes the fall or something. The heel's the bad guy. So oh, ba- no, um, right. a baby face is the good guy. A heel is the bad guy, right? Yeah. Right. In everyday life, right? You can be a heel or you can be a baby face. When it comes to business, right? I wanted to be the heel because being the heel means yeah, you're going to be hated, but at some stage you're going to ask hard, hard questions and you're going to turn around and be a baby face at one Hold day. on, but you can be a good virtuous person. Hold and, on, and listen to what I'm saying though. When I started Woodford, <laughs> when I started Woodford, right? When I started Woodford, no one was marketing it, no one was coming out. I said some things that pissed off a lot of people. Namely, CrossFit is fucking shit for the field based sport athlete. Do you know how much hate I got for that? A fucking lot. I was on fucking the project for, for four seconds, seconds or yes. five seconds of my life. Yes. You what made the it. fuck up? And they I told made... you what to say and you still went on there. You're, and I still you're, said you're, it. You're a media patsy. I, I am a patsy. That. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> you're part of the Illuminati. So he says... I, he <laughs> says I, this real sort of Rupert He says I get upset and all this shit. Man, I'll tell you what. One thing about me, man. I'm fucking... I wear my heart on my sleeve. I get. If I'm annoyed, I'm annoyed. If I'm happy, I'm happy and I'll show it. This is who I am. People say, oh, you waste well, it. choice though. Of course it is. People say, but so you why do you sh- choose to be annoyed? That's that's the part that I don't get. But uh, I, I, it's not like I pick. I wake up every day and go, I'm annoyed at this car. No, but you pick Maybe the you triggers. Do. You make the decision to go down those paths. Oh well, it's, a, it's like a <laughs> conscious thing. Yeah, yeah, I do all the time, and I love it. I never, I will never ever right, ever, then. I'll never ever apologize for anything I do. No, I, no, I, no, I, I am me. In my, no, 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 I know I'm that, but I'm just going to tell you. It. If anyone ever, like my thing is, and Kira knows this better than anyone. If someone was to tell me to do something like this, I'll give you an example. Someone asked me to do it. Um, they go, oh, we want you to come do a, 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 like a presentation with my staff. But you can't swear. I said, what? And he goes, yeah, you just can't swear. Yeah, I'm not fucking doing that. I'm de- I, I, I swear because if I swear, I swear. I, I'm literally, it's not like I'm using it against a, like a malice. It's a passion. He said, but you can't swear. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. I don't need. Yeah. I will not accept your fucking money, bitch boy, to fucking say no, that I can or can't do anything. You can be authentic. Of course I like can. That's, that's, fuck, that's, I'll do what the fuck I want. No, who's going to fucking stop me? No one. I do what I want, when I want, how I want. And no one will stop no, me. Because I, I run my own race. You're a case study for a psychologist somewhere. <laughs> I see one and I think she thinks I'm a fruit. No, no, well. no. You're, you're a case study for someone. So like, figure it out yeah but i don't my thing is i don't my thing is uh, there are so, okay, in our industry there's so many bit there's so many people who bitch and just like uh, uh, just do not control their own destiny have no accountability yeah. and they bitch and they're so scared of uh, of being an outlier they follow the sheep right i've always done things my own way 
No one tells me what to do. If someone says go this way, I'm gonna go fuck you. I'm gonna go that way. Even if it's the detriment of me. Because my thing is, in my life, I'm gonna live my own way. If you don't like me, so what? Is what it is, man. And pe- too many people kind of care what people think or this. Man, do you know what? If people hate me, I don't care. I don't even care if I've got no friends anymore, really. I don't. Now that is a different question. Because yeah. at the end of the day, people need people. Oh, well, it is what it is. People, don't, man, I've been, I'll be honest with you, man. People fuck me over consistently. I fucking don't care. Yeah, and there are some people who have been there for you your whole life. Yeah, my father, man. He fucking stood by me, man. I'll fucking... Listen, I'll tell you, my dad... Without oh, yeah, my yeah, da- yeah. Those people have their names tatted on you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a lot. No, you don't. And you know that? No, mate, but the, 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 you know what? I, I did that. Oh, I don't really want to go into the... Ba- anyway, um, listen. Yeah, these people mean a lot to me. Listen, um... It's- Face your demons, man. Mate. Eat your shadow. Oh, mate, I do with eat a psychologist your shadow. and it's not fun, mate. Good. Eat your fucking shadow. <laughs> I'm not going to eat my shadow in front of you and this uh, this malnourished child here. Oh, I can't stand that. No, you. because if you could... Uh, I think if... Look, it's your, obviously your He's decision. still friends with my ex fiance They talk more than me. Maybe I'm still in love with her. We spoke last night. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, mate, mate, do you know what? Have I ever thought in my life, mate? I had this. Oh, I'm not. Mate, Confront I, it. Yeah, maybe you are, man. Maybe, maybe, I still, maybe mate, it's the biggest regret of your life. It, it is. Maybe how you, you couldn't bench respect. Maybe how you couldn't bench 100 kilos when you came out of Woodford and I benched it before you, then you get real mad. Yeah, that's true. Um, no, but no, I'm, I'm my nourish. You um, had 15. To I don't kilos. find it funny. Hang on, you had 18 kilos of me at one point, and I still bench more than you. I, can you tell? Oh, yeah, explain how. Um, do Money's exchanged for goods and services. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I um. Hey, can we just go down that or not? We're just gonna go. Oh, you're my nourish, but I'm stronger than you. Okay, fair enough. I um. Listen, so money, that means you're overly nourished and just weak. Money can <laughs> money can be exchanged for goods and services. Yeah, fair um, <laughs> oi, oi, oi. It's in Ted's house, in Bob's house. <laughs> hey, Rob, where you got my money? There's a lemon behind that rock. Jay, I know you're laughing inside. No, I'm laughing on the outside. I just don't know how we got to that point. Oh, <laughs> for fun. Oi, um, but seriously, did so, you? Yeah. Just wait, wait. Did you talk to Kate? Yeah. Is she happy? Is she happy? She's happy. No, nah, you know what? I'm not gonna fucking laugh again. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I just you don't have to. No, but I, I, I be honest with you. Back then, I was um, how do I put it? Uh, I'll just saying that though, man. I'll be honest with you. She did. She um, and I think Jay can agree. She's she had a lot of us two together. We were like fire, uh, like fire, fire. You know what I mean? Like, how would you describe uh, let, it? Let's not get in the relationship. Podcast, can you tell her that? Oh, can you tell that I still love her and she should come back in my life? No. Okay. I won't say that She blocked me on every social media avenue no, 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 no. Ah, ah, But I, I got a new account just to add her But then she blocked me on that No I didn't do that I'm not that bad It's okay it can, it, Like people do that Like be, that, I appreciate your authenticity No no I didn't do Mate come on do you think Yes me, you did Jay would I have done that Probably. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did actually. See? I did it's actually. okay, man. Oh, so, because mate, fucking it's people do weird. that. Oh, I, mate, I am. Not, listen, there are people, and then there is Christian Woodford. I make my own fucking. I will category. get the shadow out of you and make you fucking eat it. Oi, you know what? I'll take. You start paying me for your psychology. We'll sit down talking chimps every week. No thanks, <laughs> mate. I think this is the last episode. Don't get brick back on the episode again. I will get brick back on. I'll get you all back. Do you know what I'm gonna want. do? I'm gonna kick talking chimps out of my office. You got? Then what are you gonna do? Ah. I will have to pay you or something. Yeah, exactly. So shut your fucking mouth. This is fucking funny about him. Yeah. I was thinking about this yesterday. I said, nah, fuck him off unless he pays us. I was really nice. But yeah, we'll do what you want. This is your house. Do you know what? For that answer, that's pretty, quite nice. Thank you. Oh, that's really like nice. Look at his face. Massive credit oh, to no Woodford offense. Sports Can, I, can I tell you something right now? No. My, my um, the government has made me, the, the government, you know people look at you and think you're a terrorist? That's, that's, that's the- I've look. heard this before. No, but, but, but You know people you, look at you for they think you're a Fruit Loop? Yeah, for all the time. Okay, no one. look at me and think, God, he's good looking. No offence, mate. Well, if, okay, we go around the table here, right? Um, <laughs> no, no, if we go around the table, right? Now, I'll be honest with you, mate. You want me to do shave my beard because no, hold society on, hold on, hold on, has stereotypes? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Good if we go, if we go around the room, right, and we look, we, look at, we look at people, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm handsome, I'm With pretty. the opposite sex, right? Let's be serious, okay, right? Let's go, around, let's go around the table and say, okay, if you have benched one point, over 1. 1.5 times your body weight, put your hand up. You have not done that. 1.25? Yeah, yeah, that's not No, right. hold on, no, I did 120 at 60 kilos. You did not. So, and that's two times, and that's still wrong. But you didn't do 120 at 80. So let's just leave your hand if you've done that, okay? If you've squatted over 1.8 times your body weight. I have front, done that, front, dickhead. Front squat of full depth. Uh, have you done that? Yeah. I don't know. Well, oh, oh, have you pulled 230? Uh, have you pulled 230? No, so shut, if, your, have you shut ra- your fucking mouth. Have you run a sub 3 120? Yes, yeah, so let's put your hand up with that. Okay. Uh, did, I be- did I beat you on the vertical jump by 17 centimeters? Let's yeah. pretend if you've done that. Okay, okay. So I am a hold supreme on. athlete. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have, hold on. I have uh, smoked Imagine you. if he was nourished. I have He's, uh, smoked you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have hold smoked you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Smoked you. Okay, let's look. Let's have look. Okay. And, what, That's fine. Hey, and what's let's, the one thing you've done? You pulled 230 because we're going to this podcast. Oi, oi, let's, let's ignore oi, that. Let's, oi, let's go. Oi, oi, when people look at... Okay, but if I trained to swim at deadlift, I'd smoke you in that too. I'm a strong, superior specimen. I'm better. 
better condition. Oi, 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 Ding, ding, ding. People look at me. People look at me and go, not bad looking tats. Look at him go, fuck me. He's got something wrong with him. Really? That was what I thought of him. Yeah. I honestly thought he was a ma- like something wrong. Like, he no, dude, the I thought, I honestly felt he was an undeveloped child. Yeah, like, you hired like, him. No, but that was Tom Core, man, not me. Okay, that's true. true so true. what Tom said, Tom goes, I think he's like got some sort of issue with development as well. We both thought that. Uh-huh. So why am I a superior athlete to you then? That's what Tom said, dude. It was fucked up, bro. And I said, okay, fair enough. Listen, yeah. I like oi, brain, oi, body, oi, Jay, I like you, but man, everyone thought you were underdeveloped and malnourished yeah. child, bro. It's oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, the Wait, underdeveloped how, child. How will I wake up in the hey, 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 hey. So anyway, Alex, yeah. moving on with the story about how um, good looking I am, how under malnourished uh, Jay is. Um, listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing, right? When when we go when we went to CQ, we all know who pulled, and that was me, not him. Plain and simple. It's because I was in a relationship. Touche. Oh, no, uh, we. Yeah, it's called integrity and honesty. You're, mate. And oh, so you saying? Hold on. Are you are you saying I don't have that? That's Correct. fucked, man. If you're saying that, it, no. In a you relationship, just, you, know, you, know, you just put in a relationship. Oh, in, in a relationship. Okay, fair play. But don't say that every day. Like, I, that's cool. I, I know. That's Judy, I'm, I'm just saying. Say, you know, when I was out, I was faithful. No, but, but when it comes to women, I'll be honest with you, and I'll be honest with you, listeners. I'm a womanizer, <laughs> and I fucking can't. Like, I can't. It's, it's very hard. I'll give you an example. We, we know the example. I will see a woman walking down the street, right? Okay. And I will be with the most beautiful girl. Like, example, John, my, this guy called John, my friend, we would see Q, right? Kate was there. And I was, like, ignoring her because we will get in a fight. Anyway, John goes, she's the most sexiest girl here. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's smart. Why the fuck don't you want to, like, why do you want to make up with her? And my, my issue has always been the same thing. I want more. More women's. More cars. More gyms. More, do you understand Not what I'm saying? more gyms. Not oh, more gyms okay. anymore, but, but you get the mentality. Yeah, yeah. that's my yeah. mentality. So, example, I've, my first psychologist I saw said this to me, Christian, you're driven, which is great, but you're never going to be happy because if you had a million dollars in your account, let's say I gave you a million, well, you'd say that's cool, yeah, and I say yeah, pretty sweet. And then he goes, the next day you get bored, you go, I want two million or three million. When the fuck does it stop? When do I have? When do I sit back and just be what's the word content with my life? It's not. You can pursue excellence and be content. Just hold on, Alex. I'm not finished. Let me finish what I'm saying. Don't interrupt. Do you, man, do you want me to talk or not? I came on talking chips. We're just talking chips. Um, but I, I agree with you. Just but, a real whirlwind entrance halfway through. So. Yeah. Well, mate, I'm sorry. It's my arm office. Um, yeah. True. So yeah, I, I just feel that way, and I really feel that. Um, yeah, I, I don't have regrets because I don't regret anything. But um, it's okay to regret. Hold on, I'm just like I'm. I'm saying I don't have regrets. But, but you I'm, just said you did 15 minutes ago. No, no, no. What I'm I not regret is the word. What I'm saying is I would do things differently if I had my chance. But once again, once again, okay, okay. this has all led to what's happened. Why would I have regret it? I don't. But, okay, go. And also with, listen, I, I sh- Kate was a, Kate was a great person and would have made a great wife to me. Am I upset with she's not my wife? Yeah, I am. I think she'd be a fantastic wife. I think she'd be fantastic, honestly awesome. Did she carry on? Yes. She's like every woman. Was she a beautiful person? Yes. Was she a psycho? Fuck yes, like me. But you know what? She loved me and she cared for me and I could see it in her face and I fucked that up. And now I'm lonely. No, not, not lonely. Now I'm single. I'm definitely not lonely because I like, I have learned now. I've told you this, you and I kind of, I told you, I like being alone now for some reason. I never used to be like that. I found my. I need to find my inner peace first before I can be with anyone. I'm not right. I have to fix my demons first, which I've told Respect. you before Respect. I get in a relationship. Because yes. then all I'm going to do is project my issues yes. on another other person. Right? I love you for saying that. Oh, no, but it's, it yeah. takes and for me to do it because I had an Thank opportunity yep. to be with a girl. Um, I'm not going to say her name, nothing, but um, mm-hmm. I really did like her, man. But I was not ready, yep. and I couldn't do it, and it broke her heart, man. It really upset me. But I said I was making the right decision for all for her and me. Yeah. I will never ever be, a, my next relationship, I'll marry her and have kids because I'm not, that, that's it man. Because yeah. I need to make, because I'll be yeah. honest with you man, I have, I'm not gonna rush this, I'm gonna find myself first. I need to get myself right, get the business right, and then move forward. And I think you know what a lot of people do? They get scared and they get lonely. And I'm just too ugly to find someone, aren't I? So <laughs> unlucky for me, yeah. But you, you know what, you, you, yeah you are actually, I'm just gonna fish with that, yeah you are. Um, but it's okay Jay, because you know me, and if you say my name, I guess that will get you indoors. Remember how you used to line up? God, that must have been well, demoralizing. Sorry, who, the, who, who, who? I just realized who the fuck I am. Remember sometimes. how you used to line up oi, oi, oi. and then you come with me, then not line up and not. Oi, oi, remember no. who, oi, who the fuck? Oh, fuck me, I'm that guy. Shit. And yet every, no one knew every, who you were and you every, line every, up. Every day I and fucking people wake up. Don't know every who you day are. They every, know me. Every day. Da- oh, yes. Oh, so, okay, fair enough. How oh, yes. Can, okay, how come I had to introduce you to the people I knew to get you into a place we used to go to? Fuck off, Jay. That never fucking happened. You know full well that happened. Oi, Jay, number one. No one, everyone knows you as my bitch boy to I see. 
Uh, actually, I, hold on that's, that's a bit disrespectful Yeah, no it is But, oh, okay, fair enough I'll, I'll calm that down Everyone knows you as the bitch boy of me Oh shit, that's another one I'm coming, I'm not kidding But you, listen Everyone knows you as The Woods me- second hand man oh, Nobody knows me Hold on No, Brick Nobody He's knows done a lot for you, man Oh, hold my, How am I being negative? I said he's my Robin to Batman The Smitty to Joe yeah, That's different, okay That's different, yes And then yes. you gave me the negative sandwich Wait, look at this, look at this This is Smitty oh, Here we go Here we go Hold on No, no, nothing bad Look, Smitty Told um, this kid to message me. You're gonna love this, Jay. Jay Smitty loves Shay. Uh, Look, I, hi, Smitty it's Diesel Smith. referred me to you. I asked him if he had any recommendations for sports science, kinesiology, yes, degrees in Europe. I'm looking to go back to school, but not in the States. Uh, Europe. Smitty. Yeah, Smitty Dub would have no idea where Australia is, probably. Oh, by the way, everyone, Joe DeFranco coming on Ask Woodford uh, April 22nd. Get ready for that, motherfuckers. Is he gonna do it online? Yep, and then um, I'm gone. Obviously, when I go back to America, I'll do another one with him. Not a big deal. Oh, what's that? Oh, who are you? Okay, fair enough. Man, I don't aspire to go on shit. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> then why, then, if you don't aspire, why the fuck are you on here? Just, just shut your fucking mouth. Like Dude, we're, just, we're just hanging out. We're just having a conversation, oh, man. Fuck me. Why am I back on here? We're just talking chimps. You just walked in. <laughs> so hold on. I, so so I, I went out on a bender last night for no reason. Oh, you, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Just my house of stubs. And trivia. And who? Trivia. And who's, then Stubbs who's that? went to my place. Just trivia hooker. where you answer questions. And... Oh, trivia. So, so, yeah. st- so you and Stubbs are now butt buddies. Great. Cool. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Sweet man, <laughs> you would respond differently if the, if, the, if this mic wasn't here. What's that? I feel like you would respond differently if this mic wasn't what, here. What with Stubbs? No, with Christian. Oh no, fuck him. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, that's what it is. The, the, I don't understand people who like. Anyway, fuck it. He, uh, I just want to give you credit, okay? You, okay? you don't need to give me credit, but anyway, I appreciate you. Go. I will. Okay. Sweet. Do it. I appreciate. <laughs> seriously, I do appreciate um, this happening here. Woodford Sports Science Consulting. Yeah, you're fucking right? better. Asshole. That's what I'm telling you on why we're doing this. No shit. So don't use people, motherfucker. Don't what? Use people. Ask me first. Did I did. I absolutely did when I we know, started this. I absolutely did. I'm kidding. But yeah, right. Yeah, and look, fuck all people. Watch this right now. No but shit. Who knows what will happen I in ten? We've all wasted time. Don't worry. He's no, wasted time. You're, you're what? You, don't, you guys don't want to sit down and talk? Not really. No. Have but, a conversation. But you know what? It's better than fucking sit there listening to you idiots. What, what are we even fighting for? Oh man, what are we even fighting for? Yeah, keep going. Give me, keep giving me props. <laughs> the more talking, this is in Woodford Sports Science Consulting. For those who don't know, right? So the more talking chimps raises over the next 20, 10, 20 years, the more Woodfords can can raise too. Well, we go together. So good, man. Why not win together? <laughs> I just, uh, I just, it's great. I There's just, pros to both I'm, I'm in this a, unused a, space that doesn't get used by anybody. I'm so happy for talking chimps. I'm just really happy for <laughs> talking <out>. chimps. <laughs> I'll be honest, every time. Do you have a stroke? Let me check the left side of your face. Why? Because you're not really pronouncing your words. Talking chimps. I um. At least I'll be honest with you. But if you have a problem with it, you need to seriously like talk to me. Anytime. I just said I have a problem with it. It's not hear me. No, no, no. no. Seriously. Oh, uh, uh, just no, no. We'll talk afterwards. All right. No, we can talk right now, bro. Um. Well, number one, I come up here. Where are you going to eat? Can I tell you something? Just quickly. Can I tell something about you? Yeah. No. 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 I got no problem. Just um. All I'm gonna say is just why don't you. Let me know when you're up here so I don't have to fucking be up here to listen to shit anymore. <laughs> fucking sick of it. Also, nothing, mate. But look, we've had a great conversation. Not really, mate. I just came up... Uh, did we, we? Mate, we've been going for two and a half hours. Wait, Jay. Wait, if, we, if we get anyone who listens to start to finish... Jay, can, can we... Should, I, we can should I, Zillow, will. Oh, we, we should invite them in on the show. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I ask you an honest question? Uh, here we go. Just wait. This is serious. And you need to sounds like a serious question. Have you got a girlfriend again, yes or no? No, I don't have a girlfriend again. Have you been hooking up with a girl, yes or no? No. Why, why lie about it? But why lie? I'm not lying. I'm not lying at all. So you haven't been hooking up with any girls? No. No. But why are you laughing then? Why is this a joke to you? Yeah, I've been hooking up with multiple girls. Good on you, mate. But, 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 you, but you live your life in the spotlight. I don't. I'm a private guy. So uh, obviously you have and you're a pussy then. Oh, right? I, oh yeah. That, that must make sense. Why do you say that? What makes you say that? Because you're so immature about it. Like, I'm asking you a question. But what, what gives you the perception that I... Because uh, you're smiling at me like a little bitch. No, no, but there was... That, that something must have preempted the question before I started laughing at it. Because I know you and you're fucking so weak to be alone. You have to have a woman oh, all I'm the time. Alone, no, not weak, but you like being with Fair a woman. Enough. You know you like being a woman. Fair enough. Do you not like you being... Have, you ever travelled solo? Wait. Yes, I have. Didn't you book piss a, off? You booked a flight to Thailand with somebody you'd known for two weeks because you didn't want to go by yourself. She was a stripper, Jay. You know that. She was a stripper. And don't tell the story. And also, she so hated you can't me. Be alone. Don't tell the fact she hated me after five minutes. She did. She hated me after five minutes. Wait, I've lived alone. I've travelled solo, and I oh, like. I oh, like my. Country. Okay, but well, why don't I sit here? I'm a, I'm a superior athlete in my. Well, everything's in my wrapped up in a neat little package. But Correct. being isolated and feeling alone. And, and no, I don't have a girlfriend. Oh, so I don't know where that's going. Why well, do? Do you? Kate. <laughs> 
Feeling alone is nothing to be guilty for or feel bad about. I like I like my entire oh, life. Alright, alright. Let me hit you with some information here now. Loneliness okay, is I, a I, common I, I, I want to know pain. What, what, what made you go to that line of questioning. Is it my superior good lookingness that you assume that I'm in a relationship? Because I'm not. Let me tell you something about Jay. I'll be honest, Sharp. There are things that I, I am... You've, you've asked, you asked me that question last time I saw you too. They asked it again today. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, he loves talking about women. He likes pussy, man. Yeah, of course. What, what is the option other than that? And if you like penis, that's fine. I got no issue. But I, I don't give Stick a... it up your ass in a second. Be careful. But I don't, I don't mind if you're gay, straight, homosexual, bisexual, quadsexual, quasi-sexual. You can be anything sexual. I don't care. All I'm saying is, right? What are you saying? I really don't know where I've gone with this, but I like women. And I do can't. You? Do you know what? So, you know, where, so where's the honest question in all of this? Yeah. Where there was an honest question that was coming. Yeah, you. Are you with a woman? That was, oh, that was the honest question. You yeah. said no. I said no. Oh, fair enough. Cool. Whatever. No one yeah. cares anyway. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. But Jay, seriously. Um, uh, seriously. In all seriousness, how's it um, been living with uh, Ross Al? Great. Good next, shit. Next, my guy. Yep. Anyone ever heard the story about how I got a fucking apartment and he promised he's going to move out with me, then fucking um, decline not to? Hear that some story? Fa- some family things happened that you know. Yeah. It still down there. it still hurt my feelings, but anyway. No, but he's right mm-hmm. though. Okay, you're a pair though. Less than it hurt my family. Well, fucking Christ, put me in a fucking hole. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll put you to hold it. What? You already bought the house. We didn't co buy a fucking apartment. Can I sing you a song? <laughs> <laughs> just like, <laughs> can I? Can I just play? <laughs> oh yeah, I sort of. <laughs> Do you remember this song, Jay? Oh, Alex wouldn't. I know Jay will. Jay, do you like this? This will be good. Get ready for this. Um, this will be real great. How did you cue that up so quick? Is it, oh, Shut your mouth. Well, actually, you can't, you can't play more. What don't do you mean? play songs. It'll get copyrighted. Like, what is this? It's not a song. Is this a remix? Yeah. Yeah, it is actually. We can't play songs. It's a remix. Shut your mouth. And also, when you're talking to me, I want you to ask me. We gotta pay. We gotta pay royalties. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't do this. No. No. We gotta stop this. It's not. We gotta stop this. You can't afford copyright. Take it away. Take it away. I gotta turn your mic off. Where did you come from? Where did you go? 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 Where do you have any other conspiracy theories about where we finish off? Really good looking or not? Well, mate, I've had about three hours sleep. So what, mate? I used to bend her for five days. Move the fuck on. That's, mm, not, that's, that's not a point of admiration. Well, mate, I'll be honest with you. That's why I ended up like a fucking new dick. So. Yeah. <laughs> Man, like, you know what? People ask me, people ask me, oh. People put in seats. People, people if you're going to talk, you have to sit down. No, but people ask me. You can't talk and stand up. Oh, you, you're not Conor McGregor, okay, bro. Did you not hear what I said? If you tell me to do something, do the opposite. Say, don't sit down. Don't sit down. Well, fuck you, then I'll sit down. <laughs> Oi, Jay, can I be honest with you? Sure. I want to be on you. It's so, it's so hard reading communication with Christian Woodford. Jay, stay, don't stay, go, I don't go. Jay, I want to be on you. He's a peacock captain, you gotta let me fly. Oi, don't, don't, I'm a peacock captain. Jay, can I get uh, you in front of this mic? Yes, sir. How would you review this uh, conversation over the last... Ah, uh, Christian Woodford's got his pants down. <sighs> um... Chip, it's been going on. Yeah, I like conversation. I'm a conversation guy. Yeah, so, so, yeah that's what I'm saying. Is like, how often have you, you and Christian, just like, when's the last time you guys just sat down and just chatted like this? Right? Oh, we, we do it on the phone. Yeah, but in person, different. It's nah, cool. It's, it's sort of funny on the phone though. I'm yeah, bet it is. <laughs> you guys go back and forth. Um, Where's my sweet brick? Uh, swim teaching. Yeah. No, I've had some great conversations with great people lately. Like what? Some women, some guys. Some I'm not dating. Oh, some go. of my housemates. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I've just had some really great conversations last couple of months, so it's been good. Did you want to get Nick Russell on still? No. Uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nick, Nick and I will do a co-podcast. Oh, you can come in this building. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Nick and I. Let's do. Uh, Make sure, tell me, you need to start telling me when this is signed. Done, no problem, man. Yeah, next done. Week. Next done. week. Next week. Nick and I will. Uh, Why are you two doing together? What's the reason? You do butt buddies. Oh, you jealous? Man, Things are a bit jealous, man. Hey, don't oh, sit man. down. Don't sit down. No, I'm not sitting down. Oh, no, don't sit. Down. I will. <laughs> no, fucking queer. Should say decent. Fucking gay. Anyway, this is what it is. Oh, Nick Russell. Oh, I look busy, man. Oh, 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 oh
How about going to bed so I can have my office back? I'm very soon. We'll get very wait, soon. Wait, wait, um, All right, I, yeah, I gotta go. Wait, yeah, so, so Stubbsy puts up these posts, right, man? And then all I can think, and then. Jay will write something like, oh, it's so cool. I'm seeing myself, man. That's what I write, is it? Bro, bro. I've literally bro, never bro, written bro, that in my life. Sad? I have <laughs> literally, you know I, I didn't even write Do you that on sad, your bro? shit. Do you know what's sad, bro? You. For doing really? That. Really? Hey, hey, bro, it's fine. I what mean, I've, lit- I've about, literally man? never written that. You like his posts that are so stupid. I'm like, man, you're better than that, bro. You're better than that, bro. I like your posts and they're yeah, even no, fucking no, dumber. No, you don't, don't like any of my posts. That's why I got upset. Don't worry about that. <laughs> don't get emotional about people not liking no, your posts. No, 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 Come no, on, no. It's man. Like, it's like that. It is Petty. Like stupid post. You might as well like mine. It's just even ah, better. it is that then. No, my, hey, listen. Don't compare. You need to. Come on, man. You're going to get hold of social media. Remember when I removed those apps? How good? How good was that? You know that, bro. You know I'm fresh with that. Instagram, on, all you see is titties. It's softcore porn, Jay. Just constant titties and, and panties. No, no, and I've, arse. I've, I've seen his. I've seen his followers. Well, oh, you're a you're a um a connoisseur, right? You could say of. What are you a connoisseur of in life? Seriously, what are you a connoisseur of? The human body. Okay, I'm a connoisseur of hot women. That's fair. <laughs> Yeah, anybody can follow hot women and be a connoisseur of no, them. they can't. No, they're not like me, motherfucker. I'm being serious. Look it up. Is that your <laughs> porn searches? That's 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 uh, the major porn search. Do you know what's really funny? Your old Instagram account, the Woody 899 or 889, whatever it is, that page is fucking funny, man. Why is why? Because some of the shit that you just posted on there is just... Oh, fuck with Megan and shit. That's OG. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Megan's another one who literally I was with, blonde, hot. We can't lesbian after I was with. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't blame her. I tried. Yeah. I saw her. I saw her. I'm at a music festival like two years later, and then I was with Kate. Yeah, I remember. I was with you. Yeah, that's right. Kate, it was it. It was at Reva. And then one of her friends said, "You know, Megan's." And we carried on, bro. And I said, "Can I'm just? I'm kind of pushing." Nah, I don't run anyway, bros. Yeah, I don't want to say one thing before we finish this, right? <laughs> Talking Chimps <laughs> is brought to you by Chris Woodford Signature Series. Go to Chris Woodford Signature Series for the num- the, the best third party tested supplements: creatine, monohydrate, and carbohydrate. Monotri- uh, why don't you get a bit of Mac on? If you're gonna do it up here, you're gonna put this shit up, man. Mac on product and Chris Woodford. We'll talk series. later. No, no, no. We won't you should, talk. You should pay to sponsor the show. No, I'm paying shit. Fuck off. Put it up here. And we'll I'll talk. Use we'll talk later. Simple, right? Done. We'll talk business later. We're not talking business. It's basically why well, win, you don't. Now listen. Jailus. Thank you very much for coming Good on, man. Pleasure, mate. Any well, last uh, thoughts, comments, oh, or mate. where people oh, can uh, find you? I, uh, don't find me. Don't, don't, don't even listen to me. <laughs> ask him how he, uh, mate, ask him about how he's You want us up. to go, but you keep bringing shit up. Shut your mouth. Oh, I can't do that shit. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Fuck you. We're well, done. Yeah. Jay? Pleasure, bros. This conversation went everywhere. Oh. Yep. Yep. It digressed for a while, but uh, found its way back. Thank you, brother. All I right. appreciate you. All right, man. See ya, chimps. <laughs>